Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Marble. My frog cub brought back the green dragon fruit. Chapter 21. Is he dead? Peter Parker asked. Not yet, I can still use him if I keep him. Guo Feng chuckled. Let's go, this place will be sealed off for a while, and then Sandman will understand what to do when he gets out of trouble. Peter Parker nodded thoughtfully. The scene where Guo Feng suppressed Sandman just now still shocked his heart. The enemies he has encountered so far, including himself, are absolutely impossible to withstand that blow, which is a power that subverts his cognition. Oh my god, Brother Feng is a god who has come to the world. Peter Parker thought of Guo Feng's appearance as a dragon and was secretly shocked. After the two left, the abandoned sand quarry was quickly acquired by the Stark group and sealed off. After breaking up with Peter Parker, Guo Feng returned to the Stark group. In the office on the top floor, Tony Stark was standing on the workbench disassembling the suit. After receiving the coffee from the robotic arm, Tony Stark just took a sip when the door to the office opened and Guo Feng walked in. What a coincidence, Jack. I heard from Pepper that you acquired a sand quarry. Are you planning to enter the real estate industry? Guo Feng sat on the chair and told Tony Stark about Sandman. After hearing what happened, Tony Stark looked surprised. He didn't expect such an outrageous enemy. Its ability is very restrictive to his armor, and the high temperature can only control Sandman, making it extremely difficult to kill him. But Tony Stark still looked proud. It's that guy's unlucky fate to meet you, a monster, but it's just as bad to meet me. His tone was a little sour, I really envy you. You can meet enemies with extraordinary power just by going out. I have been Iron Man for so many days, and I can only meet ordinary criminals. Ordinary criminals have made Tony Stark lose his enthusiasm. He hopes to meet tough guys to prove himself. Guo Feng said calmly, don't worry, the world will become increasingly unstable. By the way, is there any action on the shield side? Speaking of shield, Tony Stark immediately stopped smiling. You're right. Director Lu Dan is indeed a restless person. He has been infiltrating people into the company, but with Jarvis's help, these people can't make any trouble. Guo Feng nodded, he believed in Tony Stark's arrangement. After chatting with Tony Stark for a while, Guo Feng returned to his residence, just when there was news from Frog Cub. This time it is no longer about sending back photos, but a formal return. The Frog Cub is back. Frog Cub has brought you specialties and souvenirs, please check them carefully. You're back, let me see what you brought back. Ignoring the previous prompts, Guo Feng stared at the last two prompt boxes. The first one is this simple style scroll. The last one is a container with a pair of scarlet eyes. Click on the simple scroll, and a line of prompts will appear. Sage Mode General Outline, from the world of Naruto, Frogboy visited MT. Miyamu, Shishibone Forest, and Ryuji Cave. After using it, you can get the seeds of three Sage Modes, directly master the entry stage and integrate the effects. Frogboy, Daddy loves you. Guo Feng's face showed joy. You must know that the Sage Mode is one of the most advanced powers in the ninja world. After mastering it, you will get a qualitative hint of your strength. Not to mention that the three Sage Modes come together, and the effect is it is by no means as simple as simple addition. Then the second specialty should be the Sharingan. Eternal Mangekio Sharingan integrate, from the world of Naruto, Froggy integrates the ability of the modern Uchiha Mangekio Sharingan. It was a simple introduction, but Guo Feng knew exactly how abnormal these eyes were. The Mangekio Sharingan of the Uchiha clan in modern times was at its peak, including illusion, space, attack, etc. After integration, the ability is almost all round. The most important thing is that when these special products come to the Marvel Universe, they will be improved accordingly according to the force value of the universe. It's a pity that it's not the reincarnation I. I don't know if the frog cub can go to the ninja world again next time and just bring it to Hashirama's cells. Guo Feng murmured. Then he took out the specialties that the frog cub had brought this time and used them. After integrating the immortal mode, a mysterious energy circulated in Guo Feng's body, and he could feel his own strength increasing significantly. When Guo Feng opened his eyes, a pair of scarlet and cold dragon eyes appeared. After integrating into the body, the Mangekio Sharingan becomes the subordinate power of the Blue Dragon Fruit. Including the Immortal Mode, this change is in line with Guo Feng's wishes. 
he would rather maintain the form of a green dragon than become a strange person due to the integration of various powers. Opening the game interface again, Guo Feng began to prepare the luggage needed for the frog cub's next trip. The clovers accumulated in the past few days are enough to improve the frog cubs in all aspects. First of all, amulet, Guo Feng bought a paper crane, which cost a total of 2,000 clovers. In addition to significantly increasing the luck of the frog cubs, it can also designate a systematic world. The green paper crane can reach the world of immortality or fantasy. The white paper crane can reach the fantasy world. The red paper crane can reach the magical and strange world. The blue paper crane can reach the world of science fiction. What Guo Feng bought was a green paper crane. Of course, the price of paper cranes varies greatly due to price fluctuations. The more expensive the paper crane, the higher the upper limit for traveling to the world. Next was the bento, and Guo Feng bought a luxurious travel package. Finally, he upgraded the characteristics that the frog cub had strengthened last time, and now his clover has almost bottomed out. After doing this, Guo Feng turned off the game interface, and then waited for the frog cub to go on a trip. Soon, the prompt sounded. The frog cub went on a trip. Frog Zai Zai will send back photos during his trip, please check them carefully. On the other side, the Hammer Group. Less than three days before this exhibition, due to the lack of news and the impact of Stark Group, Hammer Group stock fell to new records many times. Justin Hammer came to the laboratory angrily and saw Ivan Venki who was debugging the machine at a glance. Don't you know the time is coming? What have you done so far? Justin Hammer asked loudly. Ivan Venki's expression remained unchanged. Don't worry, Mr. Hammer, I will give you a satisfactory answer one day. Justin Hammer nodded, and the next moment he grabbed Ivan Venki's collar and said angrily, I said, I want to see the results. Ivan Venki pressed Justin Hammer's hand with a cruel look on his face. Don't be so impulsive. I've already built the machine you want that can hold people, but you can't control other things. After that, Ivan Venki called out a battle armor. It was pure silver in color and its style was 70% similar to the Mark I. Under the gaze of Justin Hammer and others, the armor began to separate and reveal the position of a person. This armor is completely fine after my debugging. You can take it out for delivery. Single quote. Justin Hammer stared at the armor with burning eyes, and then restored his kind smile. I was indeed right about you. You, like Tony Stark, are rare geniuses in the world. Ivan Banky sneered. Take it and leave here, I will continue to do my own thing. Justin Hammer didn't care about Ivan Venki's attitude, but asked his men to leave with the armor. He wanted to quickly release the news to save the Hammer Group's stock market. After Justin Hammer released the news, Stark Group quickly received it. Tony Stark found Guo Feng immediately. Jack, look at this armor, it's a poor imitation. Sure enough, I still look up to Justin Hammer. This kind of thing is even embarrassing to me. Tony Stark muttered. Guo Feng took the report and looked calm after reading it. Don't underestimate the Hammer Group. The guy who helped Obadiah is not simple. Of course, this is for you. Tony Stark snorted coldly and said arrogantly, if you weren't here, this guy might still be a good opponent, but your data on developing armors is compared to yours. You can crush this guy in just one generation. After listening to Tony Stark's words, Guo Feng raised the corners of his mouth. That's what I say, but Mr. Tony, are you sure that the data is really useful? Do you want to update it for you? Although Tony Stark was a little unhappy on his face, he was quite happy in his heart. You picked a really good time, Jack. Come on, let me try my latest armor. Soon, the two came to an unfinished building built in the suburbs, which was temporarily contracted by Tony Stark and was suitable as a battlefield. After Tony Stark arrived, a transport plane arrived and dropped a red painted metal box. The metal box began to deform when it landed, and until it landed on Tony Stark, the splicing of the armor was completed. Guo Feng looked at the armor. The painting and style were not much different from the Mark I, but the shape was slightly larger and looked quite burly. Are you focusing on strength and defense? Which generation is this? Tony Stark moved his body and smiled. This is a new series of armors. I call it the Anti-Wind. It is currently the second generation. Jarvis, start combat mode. In an instant, the Anti-Wind lit up with a red light, disappeared in the blink of an eye, 
and appeared behind Guo Feng the next moment, grabbing his shoulders with both hands. The armor pushed hard, but Guo Feng didn't move at all, but the ground beneath his feet began to collapse. How is that possible? Tony Stark looked shocked. He used the maximum power from the beginning, and the data has exceeded 1,000 tons. But with this kind of power, Guo Feng couldn't be shaken at all. I said, your data is out of date a long time ago, but this is a good research direction. Are there any others? Jack, you monster, you are growing faster than before. Tony Stark cursed, then pulled away, and the back armor behind him opened and quickly formed a cannon barrel. Tony Stark did not fire the cannon immediately, but introduced, this weapon called the Vulcan Cannon was developed by me based on the data you gave Fire Fist last time. The maximum temperature can reach 10,000 degrees. After listening to Tony Stark's introduction, Guo Feng was a little surprised. I know you can bear it, but at least give me some injuries, Jack. Tony Stark said excitedly, and immediately started the Vulcan run. The scorching high temperature quickly filled the entire barrel, and with a roar that tore the air, the barrel fired magma-like energy and hit Guo Feng. But Guo Feng, who was enveloped in the red stream, just felt like taking a bath. Until the Vulcan cannon was overloaded and stopped, Tony Stark stared solemnly at the pool filled with lava in front of him. Puff! Guo Feng emerged from the lava pool and leaned on the edge like he was soaking in a hot spring, looking at Tony Stark with a smile. To be honest, this is my first time taking a lava bath. It's very comfortable. Do you want to come with me? Hell, how could you not have anything wrong? This is 10,000 degree molten lava. Tony Stark was a little angry. The Vulcan cannon was his strongest weapon at this stage, but it did nothing except destroy Guo Feng's clothes. I still remember that during the previous test, using laser could damage Guo Feng's skin. Now using laser may be like shining a flashlight on Guo Feng. Guo Feng spread his hands, actually, I don't know. This is probably talent. Mr. Tony, aren't you the same? A hundred of my heads can't compare to yours. Tony Stark. This sentence was his mantra, but he had to admit that he completely failed in this actual combat test. Jack, don't be too proud. Sooner or later you will be defeated by the anti-wind. Tony Stark said unconvinced, and then drove the suit back to the laboratory. Jarvis got a lot of data from this simple battle, and he couldn't wait to develop a new armor. After Tony Stark left, Guo Feng glanced at the building next to him and said coldly, Come out, Natasha Romanoff. It's not a good behavior to spy on men fighting. You are really a monster, Guo Feng. Natasha Romanoff, wearing a black combat uniform, walked out of the shadows of the building, the shock on her face not yet gone. After returning to S.H.I.E.L.D., she was appointed by Nick Fury to monitor the movements of Tony Stark and Guo Feng. This confrontation between the two, although brief, refreshed her worldview. A person can withstand 10,000 degree heat and still look like a normal person. This is something Natasha Romanoff never dared to think about before. Of course, Natasha Romanoff was also surprised by Tony Stark's combat prowess. How long had it been? The strength of the two of them was so outrageous. Guo Feng walked out of the lava pool and put on a black suit in front of Natasha Romanoff. Go back and tell your director, I don't care what he does in private, but don't hinder me, otherwise the temperature that shield can withstand will not be 10,000 degrees. Are you threatening us? Natasha Romanoff's expression changed. Guo Feng shook his head, threat. I'm just stating a fact. Natasha Romanoff stared at Guo Feng and said, I'm sorry for what happened before, but again, S.H.I.E.L.D. has no hostility towards you. After saying that, Natasha Romanoff retreated into the shadows and disappeared. Shortly after Natasha Romanoff left, Nick Fury at the S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters received a battle report from Tony Stark and Guo Feng. There were no highlights in the initial battle between the two, but Luoden discussed it with Coulson calmly. Tony Stark is indeed a genius. He is even better than his father, Howard Stark. As for Guo Feng, I can't tell much yet, but I guess they are about the same. Coulson nodded until he saw Tony Stark activate the Vulcan cannon, and he and Lu Dan had expressions of disbelief. Oh my god, Tony Stark has developed such a terrifying weapon. Lu Dan exclaimed. When he saw Guo Feng receiving the Vulcan cannon head-on, his eyes were filled with confusion. With an attack like a physical chop, does Tony Stark want to kill Guo Feng? Hell, that's impossible. 
When they saw Guo Feng emerging from the lava pool, Lu Dan and Coulson's eyes widened. Under such a level of attack, Guo Feng was actually intact. Until the end of the battle report, the two of them still maintained their shocked expressions. After a while, Luo Dan came to his senses and said in a serious tone, Guo Feng's strength has exceeded my expectations, and based on previous intelligence comparisons, his strength has increased too much. Coulson said solemnly, Director, Guo Feng has not shown much so far. What we have seen is just the tip of the iceberg of his strength. Luo Dan sighed. Yeah, it's just that such a person cannot work for S.H.I.E.L.D. If he is here, we will save a lot of trouble. For Guo Feng, Lu Dan has a love-hate relationship. To this day, he still wants to restrict Guo Feng, but judging from the latest information, he even has the idea of using mushroom bombs. Let Natasha Romanoff continue to follow up first. Luo Dan's eyes were deep. S.H.I.E.L.D. has been in a lot of troubles recently. In addition to external threats, there are also serious internal problems. After several investigations, Braised Eggs can confirm one thing. At the time, S-H-I-E-L-D's old enemy Hydra was not destroyed, but was lurking in S.H.I.E.L.D. However, he didn't know the extent of the lurking yet. New York, Queens. Since the Sandman incident, Peter Parker has not encountered any special incidents, but the frequency of attacks on him in Hell's Kitchen has become more frequent. When Guo Feng came to see Peter Parker after get off work, he had just repelled a wave of attacks. A spider web was hung above the alleyway, and Peter Parker was lying in it playing with his mobile phone. You're so fast, Brother Feng. Peter Parker looked at Guo Feng who walked into the alley. Guo Feng glanced at the unconscious Hell's Kitchen staff next to him and said with a faint smile, You should know the origins of these people, right? Peter Parker spread his hands helplessly and said with a wry smile, Intelligence is my weak point. I only know that these people come from a large criminal organization. These people are like leaks, coming in waves. Guo Feng nodded. This is the annoying thing about Hell's Kitchen. Few people can persevere in the face of Hell's Kitchen's revenge. Come with me, I will take you to solve the problem from the root. Guo Feng also has his own ideas about Hell's Kitchen. On the top floor of a certain commercial building, Jin Bing, wearing a white suit, was sitting on an office chair holding a golden scepter. Did it fail again? Keep sending people. Jin Bin hung up the phone and looked into the distance with deep eyes. At this moment, the communicator next to Jin Pin sounded the urgent voice of his men. Boss, Spider-Man is here, and he brought someone with him. Spider-Man, how did he know I'm here? Kingpin was a little surprised, but he didn't care about Spider-Man's arrival. To him, it was just a bug with some extraordinary power. Through surveillance, Jin Bin could clearly see who was coming, and his expression changed when he saw Guo Feng next to Spider-Man. Interesting, the acting chairman of Stark Group actually hangs out with Spider-Man. Kingpin murmured. Let them in. With Jin Bing's permission, Guo Feng and others took the elevator to Jin Bing's office without any hindrance. After entering the office, Peter Parker set his sights on Kingpin. Oh my god, this guy is too strong. Peter Parker was secretly shocked. Kingpin's burly figure was comparable to a giant human bear. Kingpin also looked at the two of them, but his eyes quickly moved away from Peter Parker and paid attention to Guo Feng. Years of training and fighting have given Jin Bin an extremely keen perception. The first feeling Guo Feng gave him made him extremely frightened. This guy is very dangerous. Jin Bing looked solemn. Guo Feng gave him the feeling of the highest crisis so far. Just standing there, it was like a big mountain was pressing on him. You look very nervous, Mr. Jin Bing. Guo Feng chuckled and casually found a place to sit down and looked at Jin Bing. In the Marvel Universe, Kingpin is one of the few people who has reached the ultimate level of human body. Although he looks like a bloated fat man, he is actually all muscles. Moreover, these muscles are all trained by Kingpin himself, and even Peter Parker can suppress them with strength alone. However, the most powerful thing about Kingpin is not his terrifying muscles, but his cunning wisdom. This is why Guo Feng came to Jin Bing. He needed talents like Jin Bing. Kingpin calmed down and smiled. When a big shot like Mr. Jack comes to see me, some nervousness is inevitable. Guo Feng's eyes were playful, really. But as far as I know, Mr. Kingpin, you are the overlord of the underground world. You can even hunt down Spider-Man, so why don't you dare? 
Kingpin's eyes narrowed, Mr. Jack, if it's because of this matter, I can give you a face and withdraw from the pursuit of Spider-Man. Jin Bing's compromise with Guo Feng was a shame, but he was really unwilling to conflict with a dangerous person like Guo Feng. Guo Feng nodded, I'm very happy that you can do this, but Mr. Jinbin, this is not the main purpose of coming to you. Kingpin frowned, oh. What else does Mr. Jack have to ask for? I will try my best to satisfy you if I can. Do something for me, Kingpin. Upon hearing this, Jin Bing's expression changed. Mr. Jack, this joke is not funny at all. Guo Feng put away his smile and said coldly, this is no joke. Of course you have the right to refuse, but you don't have the strength to refuse. Jin Bin's eyes became cold and he stepped back, while green poisonous mist poured out of the office. Cunning guy. Guo Feng's face was calm, and his overlord domineering aura was activated, which instantly dispersed the poisonous fog, but Jin Bing's figure also disappeared. At the same time, an alarm sounded throughout the building, and then all elevators and stairs in the building were closed, and countless armed men in black suits blocked the surrounding area. Brother Fung, what are we going to do? Peter Parker cast a puzzled look. The development of the matter was beyond his expectation. Guo Fung sneered. Of course I'm chasing him. Fatty Jin can't escape today. Immediately, Guo Fung stood up and walked out of the office. The moment he walked out, the surrounding doors opened, dozens of Hell's Kitchen personnel rushed out, and intensive firepower poured in. The dense rain of bullets suddenly stopped when it approached Guo Feng. Guo Feng waved his hand and the bullets returned and killed all these people. The next moment, an invisible aura erupted from Guo Feng's body and enveloped the entire building. Under the wave of overbearing domineering energy, almost everyone lost consciousness in an instant. Jin Bin, who had reached the escape tunnel, suddenly paused, and his consciousness felt like he had been hit by a heavy hammer. But with amazing willpower, Kingpin still survived, but all his men around him lost consciousness. Kingpin looked horrified, this unknown attack frightened him. Did Jack do it? This guy is too scary. Kingpin was secretly frightened and rushed out of the escape tunnel to the apron. The pilot inside had lost consciousness, so he had to drive the helicopter away himself. On the rooftop of the building, Peter Parker pointed at the helicopter that gradually disappeared from sight. Brother Fung, where is that guy? Purple flame clouds surrounded Guo Feng, and then enveloped the two of them and chased Jin Bing. Guo Feng did not choose to take action in the air, but followed Jin Bin all the way to a base. Kingpin stepped off the helicopter and breathed a sigh of relief, his face regaining its dignity. Guo Feng's threat was too great so he decided to let Hell's Kitchen calm down for a while to avoid being called upon again. Yahoo! Peter Parker fell from the sky, and the spider web hit Kingpin's legs, and he landed on the helicopter and pulled hard. Kingpin almost fell down, and with an angry look on his face, he pulled hard, causing Peter Parker to lose his balance and almost fall to the ground. What? Peter Parker looked confused, Kingpin's power could actually resist him. Not believing in evil, he began to wrestle with Kingpin. Seeing this, Kingpin became fierce and threw away the scepter in his hand. He grabbed the spider web with both hands and pulled hard. Is this guy so strong? Peter Parker vomited. After a struggle, he was the one at a disadvantage. At the same time, a large number of Kingpin's men arrived, with countless weapons aimed at Peter Parker. Just when Peter Parker couldn't hold on anymore and was about to be pulled over by Kingpin, a hand placed on the spider silk and pulled gently. Jin Bin on the other end was pulled over without any resistance. Jin Bin fell to the ground in embarrassment. He raised his head just in time to see Guo Feng looking down at him. How is that possible? Jin Bin couldn't believe it. He couldn't even resist the power that just came from the spider thread, and this was just a casual pull from the man in front of him. It's hard to imagine how terrifying this guy's true power is. I ran off in the middle of the conversation, Kingpin, and I need an explanation. Jin Bin wanted to stand up, but Guo Feng stepped on his back. Jin Bin felt like he was unable to move under the pressure of a huge mountain. You fool. Such humiliation made Kingpin suddenly lose his temper. Seeing this, Jin Bing's men glared at Guo Feng and turned their firepower to target him. Guo Feng shrugged, completely ignoring Jin Bing's men, and said playfully, Jin Bing, put away your so-called dignity as the overlord of the underground world. Again, I need an explanation. 
Jin Bin glared at Guo Feng, unwilling to admit defeat. Jack, you are indeed powerful in terms of strength, but you can't take care of the whole world. Believe it or not, something will happen to the Stark group in less than five minutes. Is this your threat? Guo Feng looked indifferent. Kingpin smiled and said, this is just a fact. After all, this is what we villains are good at. Jack, don't you want an explanation? Let me go. Guo Feng stared at Jin Bing and slowly raised his feet. It's not that he's afraid of Kingpin's threat, what he needs is Kingpin and his hell's kitchen. A boss that blindly suppresses Jin and makes him surrender on the surface will easily lose his prestige in Hell's Kitchen, and now Jin Bin is also planning to compromise. Jin Bin stood up, picked up the scepter, walked to Guo Feng and showed a kind smile. Jack, you are a very powerful being. You are the most dangerous guy the first have encountered so far, so I am happy to be your friend. I hope you are a loyal friend, Jin Bing. Guo Feng said calmly, and then pulled Peter Parker aside and left. On the way, Peter Parker said doubtfully, Brother Feng, just let this guy go. He is an evil criminal. Guo Feng shook his head, Peter, the criminals in this world are as inexhaustible as leaks, especially a huge criminal organization like Hell's Kitchen. Do you know what will happen if the kingpin is missing? Those criminals will be more restrained, after all, they lack a leader. No, those guys will be more unbridled. Kingpin is their rule. Even if one kingpin is eliminated, other villains will appear. This result is the best. Guo Feng chuckled and said, Of course, when those villains come out to commit crimes, you can still send them to prison. This is what you should do as Spider-Man. Peter Parker mused. After a while, the two arrived at the Stark group, and upon arrival they received news from Tony Stark. When he arrived at Tony Stark's laboratory, this guy called Peter Parker alone. Remember the promise I made to you before. Peter. Peter Parker's eyes lit up. Mr. Tony, are you talking about the spider armor? Tony Stark looked proud, and he snapped his fingers in a very pretentious manner, and a nearby workbench rose up. After unfolding, a spider armor painted in black and red appeared. The cool armor with a sense of science fiction immediately caught Peter Parker's attention, and he hurriedly got closer and looked at it passionately. Tony Stark is very satisfied with Peter Parker's performance. This is how a genius should be treated, not like some guy sitting around drinking tea. Mr. Tony, this is too expensive. I think I can't accept it. After all, I have not made any contribution to the Stark group. Even though he coveted the spider armor, Peter Parker still felt embarrassed. Take it, Peter, I made it specially for you. If you can't use it, this armor will be meaningless. Faced with Tony Stark's tough attitude, Peter Parker had no choice but to accept it. By the way, I remember Mr. Tony, you said that you were going to prepare a suit of armor for Brother Fung, is there any result? Peter Parker's inadvertent question made Tony Stark's smile suddenly freeze. Cough cough cough. Peter, you should know Jack's power. Even with my genius and wisdom, it will take some time to create the corresponding armor. Peter Parker nodded and immediately began to put on the spider armor. Tony Stark specially prepared a venue for Peter Parker to test the performance of the suit. After Peter Parker entered the test venue, Tony Stark looked at Guo Feng. You've been quite active in Queens lately, any news? Guo Feng looked at Tony Stark's eager look and said casually, there is a special guy who has been causing trouble for Peter recently. I went over to solve it. You should leave this opportunity to me. It feels so boring to deal with ordinary villains every day. Single quote. Guo Feng shook his head, even though you were easily defeated by me, with your current strength, you are still overqualified for this incident. Don't worry, Hammer Group has been able to meet your requirements in the recent period. Single quote. Tony Stark narrowed his eyes and said doubtfully, Justin Hammer. With his ability, don't tease me. Of course it's not Justin Hammer, it's the guy behind him. Isn't tomorrow the Hammer Group exhibition? Then you can let go and have fun. With the kind of thing he built, I can solve it in a few seconds. Tony Stark said proudly. In his eyes, what the Hammer Group showed was inferior to even the Iron Overlord. Guo Feng smiled mysteriously, that guy's thinking is different from yours. He doesn't like people in the armor. To be honest, he was also looking forward to what kind of work the famous whiplock Ivan Vanko would be able to do tomorrow, but if the original robot army were to deal with Tony Stark, the result would be tantamount to being crushed. 
Not to mention the anti-win series of battle armors, even the first generation mark can beat Ivan Venki's assembly line robots in performance. But considering that Ivan Venko followed Obadiah, the manufacturing level should not be as bad as the original. Stop pretending to be the Riddler, just talk about it. Tony Stark approached him curiously, but was simply rejected by Guo Feng. As I said, you will know tomorrow. That is the transition I left for you. Okay. Let's go see Peter. After being rejected again and again, Tony Stark snorted coldly, and then headed to the testing site with Guo Feng. In the empty testing site, Peter Parker, wearing the spider armor, was having a great time playing. All aspects of the armor's functions were very much in line with his taste. He felt that wearing this armor, he would definitely not be so embarrassed when facing Jin Bin again. Not to mention crushing him like Guo Feng, at least it would be much easier to deal with him. After Peter Parker's experiment, Tony Stark recorded the data and made the spider armor into a melon-sized mechanical ball. Put him in your backpack and press the button in the middle to complete loading when needed. Peter Parker's eyes lit up and he put the mechanical ball into his backpack. Tony Stark continued, this is just the beginning. Once I successfully conquer nanotechnology, the subsequent armor will only need to accommodate very small things to carry. Mr. Tony, you are really a genius. This is just a little bit of talent. After all, I am Tony Stark. Tony Stark looked delighted. Only in Peter Parker could he find the happiness of being a genius. Guo Feng didn't care about Tony Stark's little thoughts, but left here silently. Just now, Dr. C. Udai contacted him. Booze, there is news from the Osborne Group. Dr. Connors reported the changes in Osborne Group during this period to Guo Feng. You did a great job Dr. Connors. Guo Feng still trusts Dr. Connors. Since he was transformed by him last time, in Dr. Connors' subconscious, he is the Supreme Master. After turning off the communication, Guo Feng thought about the information Dr. Connors just said. During this period of time, Norman Osborne has been very active and has launched many projects, among which the largest investment is the individual exoskeleton armor. The person in charge of this project attracted Guo Feng's attention. Octavius, future Dr. Octopus helped the Osborne Group's armor project achieve breakthrough progress, and other robot projects were also spawned. The Osborne Group is going to cause trouble. Guo Feng murmured, and he planned to find a suitable time to intervene in this matter. The next day, the Hammer Group's exhibition has decided to be held in the afternoon, and the main content of this exhibition is the individual exoskeleton armor. In the underground laboratory, Ivan Vanki was holding a tablet computer for final debugging. In front of him were thousands of silver-painted robots. The style of these robots is similar to Mark I, but they do not carry humans but are unified by system terminals. They are divided into three models, light, medium and heavy. After completing the final debugging, Ivan Venki put away the computer. Behind him, a battle armor painted in blue and white appeared. The style of the battle armor was not much the same as that of other robots. The biggest difference was that the hands of the battle armor turned into two whips. This is the exclusive armor built by Ivan Vanki, and he also moved the system terminal into this armor. Family Stark, welcome my revenge. Immediately, Ivan Vanki put on the battle armor, and at the same time, all the robots were activated. Next, Justin Hammer brought people here. The exhibition was about to start and he needed some samples. Where is Ivan Vanko? Why is he missing? Justin Hammer asked his men. He said he was going to do a private research. Does the boss want to see him? Justin Hammer waved his hand, don't worry about him for now, gather people to transport all these machines, leaving two people waiting for Ivan Vanki. After speaking, Justin Hammer made a gesture of wiping his neck. He had long realized that Ivan Vanki was out of control. The most critical moment had passed and Ivan Vanki could die. When Justin Hammer transported all the machines away, Ivan Vanki appeared in a battle armor and easily eliminated the men left by Justin Hammer. On the other side, the Hammer Group's exhibition is about to begin. Tony Stark and Guo Feng arrived just as the exhibition was being held, and at this time Justin Hammer was standing on the high platform giving an explanation. Looking at the armor presented on the stage, everyone present showed great interest, except Tony Stark and Guo Feng. Tony Stark, who was sitting in the back row, sneered and said to Guo Feng next to him. 
Jack, look at this pathetic design, even if I used the original blueprint of throwing all the trash cans, it would be better than this. He continued to count with a doubtful tone, this kind of garbage is what those idiots would want. If it is used in actual combat, to me, it is no different from the terrorists in the East. Guo Feng smiled lightly and said, the armor on the stage is indeed rubbish, but you have to understand that Ivan Vanki is not an elitist like you. He is also a genius in mass manufacturing. Immediately afterwards, Guo Feng stood up and prepared to leave. Enjoy the next battle, Mr. Tony. I'll go to Pepper and Happy first to prevent that fool from jumping over the wall. After saying that, Guo Feng disappeared in front of Tony Stark. Cut. Tony Stark snorted coldly, leaning on his seat and looking at the stage without interest. At the same time, a science fiction-like aircraft hovered over the exhibition site, carrying several types of armor. It would deliver the corresponding armor to Tony Stark based on the situation on site. Although he expressed disdain, Tony Stark actually prepared many plans for this time. The exhibition was still going on. Behind the scenes while Justin Hammer was explaining, Ivan Banko walked out of the darkness wearing a whiplock armor. The sudden appearance of the new armor immediately attracted the attention of everyone present. The sudden change made Justin Hammer a little confused. He looked at the whiplock armor and asked doubtfully, Ivan Banki, is that you? Yes, it's me, Mr. Hammer. Ivan Banki's cold voice came from within the armor. Justin Hammer looked at the whiplock armor, his expression suddenly filled with joy. Look at this armor, you're actually researching it behind my back, but it's a surprise that you came here in time. After saying that, Justin Hammer came to the side of the whiplock armor, and his face became a little darker when he came over. Give me some face. I was wrong in what happened before, but this time is a good opportunity. After it's over, I will give you a compensation fee and we will write it off. Ivan Banki was silent for a few seconds, then raised his hand and grabbed Justin Hammer's neck. The strong force made Justin Hammer miserable. Cancel it with one stroke. That's right, that's why I came here today. This time the grudge between you and the Stark family will be wiped off. Such a turn of events shocked everyone at the venue. Before they could react, the power in the entire venue suddenly stopped, and countless scarlet eyes lit up in the dim venue. It was a row of silver-painted war robots. Interesting. Tony Stark, who was sitting in the back row, watched all this calmly. At the same time, the ceiling of the venue exploded and a metal box quickly fell on him. In the blink of an eye, Tony Stark put on the suit. This suit of armor is the second generation of the Anti-Wind series, and it is also Tony Stark's strongest suit so far. Ivan Banki on the stage noticed this, threw away the unconscious Justin Hammer, and said in a crazy tone, Tony Stark, how dare you come here alone, where is your yellow-skinned friend? Shouldn't you be scared away? Come on. Tony Stark jumped up and landed in front of Ivan Banki and said disdainfully, Jack told me about you. I can only say that my father's decision was right. As for Jack, you should be glad that he is not here, otherwise you would it will be crushed to death by him like a piece of trash. Faced with these words, Ivan Banki directly broke through and roared, you will pay the price for this today. If I kill you, I will destroy the Stark group and completely eradicate everything in your family. Suddenly, the surrounding robots attacked Tony Stark, while Ivan Banko stepped aside. He also knew that the quality alone was not comparable to that of Tony Stark. When thousands of robots were consumed, he believed that Tony Stark could not withstand it. When Tony Stark was besieged, Ivan Banko led hundreds of robots to the Stark group, preparing to control his relatives and friends. At the venue, Tony Stark stood still and allowed the firepower network of the war robots to output. As a armor made using Guo Feng's data, Guo Feng's defense is the core reference. Although it is impossible to take a bath at 10,000 degree temperatures like Guo Feng, standard equipment like war robots can withstand it without any problem. Sir, I want to remind you that although you are cool like this, you consume a lot of energy. Jarvis reminded. I know, but this feels so good. No wonder Jack likes this. After saying that, several grooves opened on the arms and back of the armor. Almost instantly, Jarvis completed the target lock, and countless hummingbird file-sized missiles poured out. Each shot accurately hit the war robot and destroyed it. Immediately afterwards, the arm of the armor deformed and revealed an orange blade.
the flight mode is turned on, and Tony Stark walks among the war robots, tearing the war robots apart with his blade. On the other side, Ivan Vanko led the war robots to the top of the Stark group and surrounded it. Under the systematic scanning, Ivan Vanki quickly determined the location of the target. In the office, Guo Feng was drinking tea leisurely. Behind him, Chili Pepper and Happy were sitting in special protective cabins. Jack, wouldn't it be dangerous if you left Tony alone outside? Pepper said worriedly, as did Happy next to him. Guo Feng chuckled and said, Don't worry Potts, Mr. Tony is having a lot of fun over there, and we are not just waiting here, the enemy is already here. When he finished speaking, the wall next to him was blown open, and a group of war robots poured in. Ivan Venki finally walked in. Look, the real master is here soon. Guo Feng ignored the war robots around him and looked at Ivan Venki teasingly. The visor of the whip lock armor opened, revealing Ivan Venki's indifferent face. Is it because you don't seem to take me seriously because you defeated that idiot Obadiah? But you have to know that the Iron Overlord is just a low-quality defective product. To make you so proud of defeating a defective product is worthy of trust. Stark's dog-like ego. Guo Feng's expression remained unchanged. You are right, Iron Overlord is indeed a low-quality and defective product, but you have to know that the biggest gap between you and Tony Stark is not skills and talents but not admitting your own shortcomings and always living in your own world. Quote. Seeing Ivan Venki's face looking ugly, Guo Feng continued, Tony is indeed arrogant, but he has the capital to be arrogant, but you. I thought Obadiah's death would make you change a lot, but in the end it's still like this it's garbage, I'm so disappointed. Being ridiculed for, seeking death, Ivan Venki took action directly, and the surrounding war robots swarmed in. An invisible momentum burst out from Guo Feng's body, and Ivan Venki's consciousness went dark, but he quickly recovered under the protection of the auxiliary function of the armor. When he regained consciousness, the expressions around him were unbelievable. All his war robots collapsed and fell to the ground. This scene greatly impacted Ivan Venki's sanity. You should understand what I'm saying now. Guo Feng sat back at this time and looked at Ivan Venki with a joking look on his face. Now that he has been promoted to the intermediate level, the overlord domineering power is more powerful than he imagined. Just a slight release can instantly disrupt the surrounding magnetic field. If he hadn't stopped at the critical moment, Ivan Venki would have fallen to the ground and passed out. As witnesses, Pepper and Happy looked shocked. Originally, when Ivan Venki arrived, both of them were very nervous. As employees of the Stark group, they knew very well the powerful weapons equipped by those robots. When Guo Feng went to stop them, both of them were heartbroken. As a result, in the blink of an eye, all the robots crashed. Mr. Jack, did you do this? Pepper asked in surprise. Guo Feng chuckled and said, that's right, it's my instinct. Careful. Little Pepper shouted, and she saw Ivan Venki activating the whip in his hands and lashing Guo Feng's head. Ivan Venki smiled ferociously. At such a short distance, this guy's reaction speed could not be faster than his armor. Even if the guy in front of him is an extraordinary person, he will not die if he hits his head. Guo Feng sat with a calm expression. He didn't even bother to dodge this level of attack. The next moment, the energy whip hit Guo Feng's head. Bang. The energy whip exploded immediately, and Ivan Venki's expression changed drastically. How is that possible? He thought about many situations, but the reality was that nothing happened to Guo Feng. Instead, he overloaded most of his armor and scrapped it. From this I can see the difference between you and Tony Stark. At least he can make me feel a little pain. Guo Feng said calmly. This is not realistic at all. How can a human win against a machine? Ivan Venki roared, but he was still unwilling to admit defeat. You are indeed very strong, but what about Tony Stark? He faces thousands of enemies. As long as he dies, even if I am killed by you today, it will still be a success. At least I have completed my revenge. Oh, it's that idiot who wants me to die. A joking word sounded behind Ivan Venki. Ivan Venki trembled all over and looked back in disbelief. Tony Stark. Ivan Venki couldn't believe it, and then his expression became dejected. This revenge was a complete failure. Tony Stark walked to Guo Feng at a leisurely pace. The armor on his body did not have much damage except for being stained with a layer of gray. What do you want to do with him? Guo Feng asked. 
To be honest, he didn't want to kill Ivan Vanky. This guy was a talent. If he didn't do it behind closed doors, he would be a low-end version of Tony Stark. Tony Stark was thoughtful, but Ivan Vanky next to him saw this opportunity and rushed towards him angrily. Stuck. Ivan Vanky suddenly knelt down, and an invisible force pressed down on him like a mountain. Don't cause trouble, Ivan Vanky. You are a loser now. If you do something small again, your legs will be broken next time. Guo Feng said coldly. Tony Stark glanced at Ivan Vanko and chuckled, send him to prison and live out his life with today's shame. Kill me. Ivan Vanki was so anxious that he would rather die than go to jail with humiliation. Then you make the arrangements. Guo Feng waved his hand, and Ivan Vanki suddenly lost consciousness, and then came to the protection cabin to release Little Pepper and Happy. It's safe now, go about your business. The shock on their faces had not faded away, and it took them a while to react and leave with complicated expressions. Next, Ivan Vanko was sent to prison by Tony Stark. Of course, someone will clean up the rest of the mess, and of course the worst among them is the Hammer Group. This incident almost caused heavy losses to the Hammer Group. Both the stock market and reputation basically fell to the bottom, and they no longer had the capital to compete with the Stark Group. The information about this incident was quickly sent to S.H.I.E.L.D. Nick Fury looked at the battle report, and his already dark face became even more gloomy. Ivan Vanky's war robot army is a terrifying force in the eyes of most forces on the Earth. It is easy to destroy a small country in a short time with that kind of firepower configuration technology. However, this level of power was dealt with like mowing grass by Tony Stark. Guo Feng's strength was enough to give him a headache, and as a result, Tony Stark now also has such powerful strength. The key is that the two should wear the same pair of pants. Thinking of this brazed egg makes me worry, why doesn't such power belong to S.H.I.E.L.D.? Have the creators of these robots been found? Lu Dan asked the assistant behind him. It was found out that he is a bear countryman named Ivan Vanky. The assistant reported Ivan Vanky's background and relationship with the Stark family to Lu Dan. After listening to this, Luodin looked thoughtful. He didn't care about Ivan Vanky's complicated relationships. What he cared about was his ability. So far, the only ones who can research the Ark Energy are Tony Stark and Ivan Vanko. Tony Stark cannot be used by S.H.I.E.L.D. for the time being, but Ivan Vanko might be able to. Even if cultivated, it can be used as a weapon to restrict the Stark group. Thinking of this, Lu Dan immediately contacted Coulson and asked him to bring Ivan Vanko back to S.H.I.E.L.D. Director, this may be a bit difficult. Just now Tony Stark released the news that anyone who takes away Ivan Vanko must be prepared to take revenge from him. Coulson looked embarrassed. Luodin's expression changed, and then he sneered, retaliation. As expected of him, but Tony takes himself too seriously. Don't forget that the United Nations is behind S.H.I.E.L.D. To bring Ivan Vanko back, even if Tony pursues it, it won't happen relation. It's the director. Coulson turned off the communication and immediately went to the prison to get people. Revenge. Lu Dan shook his head and smiled. He had investigated Tony Stark for a long time and knew his temper well. Maybe Tony Stark would be brave enough to do this to other organizations. But officials will still make concessions if they do. There's just one thing I'm not sure about, and that's Guo Feng behind Tony Stark. Stark Group. Has the news been released? It has been released, but I don't think anyone will be willing to rescue Ivan Vanky. He is just a loser. Tony Stark chuckled and sat next to Guo Feng holding a cup of coffee. He said curiously, I heard Little Pepper say that you didn't even use your hands to deal with these robots yesterday. You just stood there and solved them all. Guo Feng smiled mysteriously, you can think of it as a biological magnetic field, but it has many wonderful uses, such as cleaning up stray fish. Biomagnetic field. Tony Stark thought thoughtfully, and then his eyes lit up. This is a good idea. Having the idea, Tony Stark immediately left here and headed to the laboratory. After Tony Stark left, the purple flame cloud enveloped Guo Feng, turning into a rainbow and flying to the prison where Ivan Vanko was imprisoned. By the time he arrived, Ivan Vanki had disappeared. After some investigation, Ivan Vanki was picked up by a group of officials. Someone from S.H.I.E.L.D. Guo Feng looked into the distance with complicated eyes. In this situation, the most likely force that dares to take Ivan Vanki is S.H.I.E.L.D. 
After some thought, Guo Feng decided to go to the SHIELD headquarters to have a look. At the same time, at SHIELD's base in New York, several black transport trucks arrived. After the two leading vehicles stopped, Ivan Banko walked out of them with a chain. Ivan Banki looked a little numb. This is the second time he has been released from prison. Come with me, Ivan Banki. Colson said coldly, leading Ivan Banki into the base. At this time, Lu Dan was waiting with his assistant in a secret room in the base. The door opened and Ivan Banki walked in alone. He took a look at the environment and then focused on the braised eggs. It seems that you are the leader of this group of people. Lu Dan smiled and said, Ivan Banki, you are a smart man, you should know the reason why we invite you. Ivan Banki sneered. What else is it for? Isn't it just for those technologies? But you should go to Tony Stark for this kind of thing. I'm just a loser. Luodin didn't care about Ivan Banki's attitude, but continued, Yes, you are indeed a loser, but this cannot deny your talent. First of all, you have to know one thing, we are not guys like Justin Hammer. We have a place where your talents can make a real difference. Hearing this, Ivan Banki looked even more disdainful. What a loud tone. Braised Egg was not angry either, but patiently began to fool around. After hearing the background of S.H.I.E.L.D., Ivan Banki's expression became serious. If what this guy said is true, it is indeed a big background. It's okay to let me join S.H.I.E.L.D., but you have to agree to one condition. Luodin shook his head, I know what you want to say, but we can't help you take revenge on Tony Stark, but another person can. Ivan Banki was stunned, but seeing Lu Dan's tough attitude, he was silent for a while and said, It's possible, but can you really do it? That guy named Jack is very strong, at least I think he is better than Tony Stark is even stronger. Luodin said, You don't have to worry about this. Besides, we don't want to eliminate him, but to restrict him. He ignored Ivan Banki's face and continued, This is the only thing I can guarantee. In fact, you have no other choice. Instead of staying in prison for the rest of your life, it is better to continue your research, what do you think? Ivan Banki had a complicated expression, and then sighed, he really had no choice. Then you are welcome to join SHIELD, and we will provide you with the best conditions. Lu Dan smiled, but actually he felt a little helpless. Who would care about Ivan Banko if he could get help from Tony Stark? Just when a group of people left here and prepared to return to the headquarters, a purple rainbow light fell from the sky and landed in the parking lot. Boom. The terrifying impact destroyed all the cars in the parking lot, leaving Luodin and his party in a very embarrassed state after being hit by the wave. That fired missiles at us. Lu Dan cursed secretly, quickly took out his weapon and hid in the bunker, observing the surroundings cautiously. At the same time, armed personnel from the base rushed to the scene. At this time, a figure walked out of the dust of the ruins of the parking lot. Guo Feng. Nick Fury was shocked, but he did not walk out of the bunker, but ordered his men to surround Guo Feng. Guo Feng ignored the guards around him and looked at Lu Dan's bunker. Fury, you are so brave. You dare to even ask for a guy like Ivan Banko. Have you forgotten what happened to Obadia and Justin Hammer? Immediately, Guo Feng pointed a small flame and exploded Lu Dan's bunker. The braised egg got up in disgrace after being blown away. He instinctively wanted to fight back, but he calmed down the moment he pulled the trigger. However, the surrounding guards were not so calm. The moment they heard the explosion, they opened fire on Guo Feng. However, the dense rain of bullets stopped less than one meter away from Guo Feng. Cease fire, cease fire quickly. Lu Dan shouted anxiously, if Guo Feng was angered, all these people would die. When the guards ceased fire, the bullets hovering around Guo Feng suddenly changed direction. Puff puff puff. These bullets all hit the guards' limbs. Although they were not fatal, they immediately lost their ability to move. Lu Dan frowned and asked Guo Feng, Guo Feng, are you going to be an enemy of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Guo Feng sneered, are you kidding? You already chose to be my enemy when you took away Ivan Banki. Now this level is just a small lesson. Lu Dan's face was gloomy. He couldn't believe that Guo Feng was so arrogant. Hand over Ivan Banki and I won't embarrass you. Why bother? Guo Feng, Ivan Banki has been defeated by you. Why are you still holding on to such a person? Guo Feng sneered, you also know that he is a loser, but why are you so keen to recruit him? 
to create SHIELD's unique armor project. Are you kidding? It's because of the Rubik's Cube. After hearing Guo Feng's words, Lu Dan's expression was suddenly shocked. You must know that the research on Tesseract is a top secret project of S.H.I.E.L.D. Since it took over after killing Hydra, the research on Tesseract has not stopped for a moment. However, over the years, S.H.I.E.L.D. has not made much progress in its research on the Tesseract, which is the main reason why Luo Dan is so keen on Tony Stark. Lu Dan did not ask how Guo Feng knew about this, but said earnestly, you actually know the Rubik's Cube. I don't want to explain so much. That thing is extremely important to us. As long as we can crack the Rubik's Cube, the whole Earth will get it. Huge amounts of progress, then we won't have to worry about those threats. Guo Feng was speechless. Anyone who knows the Marvel Universe knows that the Tesseract is not a treasure of civilization, but a Pandora's box. Of course, Guo Feng did not intend to tell Lu Dan about the secret behind Tesseract. Not to mention whether Lu Dan would believe it or not, he himself had no idea of becoming a prophet to save the world. Do you think that the fate of all mankind can be protected by entrusting it to the Tesseract? But I can't control your stupid idea, but Ivan Venko must die today. Guo Feng's attitude was beyond Lu Dan's expectations, but he still did not give up trying to dissuade Guo Feng. Of course it would be best to be able to persuade, but at the very least it could delay time. When Coulson brings Ivan Venki back to the headquarters, the overall situation will be decided. At that point, Lu Dan believes that Guo Feng will compromise. Although Guo Feng is very powerful, can he still withstand those strategic level weapons? However, Guo Feng did not continue chatting with Braised Egg at all, turned around and flew away. This guy knows Coulson's location. Lu Dan looked ugly and quickly contacted Coulson. At this time, Coulson's helicopter just left New York and flew toward the sea. There will be special supersonic aircraft to deliver them to the headquarters. Next to the helicopter, there were two fighter jets escorting it. At this moment, a purple rainbow light flashed across the sky, and in the blink of an eye, two fighter jets were shot down. By the time Coulson reacted, Guo Feng was already standing in front of him. Long time no see, Coulson. Coulson looked at Guo Feng in disbelief, Jack, why are you here? You should know this. Ivan Banki is right behind. Don't stop me, otherwise the helicopter will crash. Guo Feng said calmly, and then walked towards the hatch at the back, which was made of alloy. The door was opened easily by him. Stop Jack, you can't do this. Coulson wanted to organize, but Guo Feng's cold eyes responded to him. Coulson immediately stopped what he was doing and said helplessly, by doing this, you are an enemy of S.H.I.E.L.D. You are an enemy of the official world. Don't scare me with this, Coulson. The matter about Ivan Vanko is completely done by your director. Compared to a little person like Ivan Vanki, do you think the world's official will stand by you if they know about the Tesseract? Behind you. Coulson's expression changed drastically. Before he could say anything, Guo Feng had already entered the back. When Ivan Vanki saw Guo Feng appear, he was stunned for a moment, and then said calmly, Did Tony Stark ask you to kill me? Sure enough, the Stark family are all insidious fools. If you stay in jail honestly, nothing will happen to you. At least I won't consider killing you in the short term. Guo Feng looked calm. Ivan Vanki wanted to say something else, but Guo Feng didn't give him a chance. He broke his neck with one hand and burned his body to ashes. After witnessing the death of Ivan Vanki, Coulson's expression suddenly changed. He couldn't believe that Guo Feng really dared to kill Ivan Vanki. Guo Feng glanced at him and said, Goodbye Coulson. When you see Fury, tell him that if you want revenge, just come. Guo Feng continued, For the sake of your service in the Stark group for a period of time, I have to tell you that Captain America Rogers is not dead. I believe you can find him soon. After saying that, Guo Feng jumped off the helicopter and left. Coulson was stunned. Guo Feng actually said that Captain America was not dead. But considering that Guo Feng knows about the Tesseract, this kind of thing is probably true. When Coulson returned to the headquarters, Lu Dan knew the result without seeing Ivan Vanki. How dare he? Luo Dan gritted his teeth, but there was nothing he could do about it. After all, Ivan Vanki's identity is somewhat sensitive, and it is S.H.I.E.L.D. that is being blamed for the losses. Even if the Tesseract incident is revealed, S.H.I.E.L.D. will be in big trouble. Director, 
Jack told me some news before he left. He said Captain America is still alive. Luodin's expression changed and he said in surprise, Rogers is still alive. How is this possible? Didn't he die together with the Red Skull? Coulson said, but no one has seen the body of Captain America. Maybe he is really still alive. Lou Dan pondered for a while, you are right, if Rogers is really alive, that is great news for us. Coulson, you are responsible for this matter. On the other side, when Guo Feng returned to New York, he encountered an uninvited guest. The red space door opened in front of Guo Feng. With such an iconic space door, Guo Feng immediately knew who was coming. Kama Taja's mage. Guo Feng was a little surprised, but he quickly regained his composure. It was normal for him to be noticed by Kama Taj based on his recent performance. Immediately, a fat yellow man wearing a black robe walked out of the space door. It seems that you are not very surprised by my arrival. Do you know us? Wang smiled, but his hands were ready with combat spells. Guo Feng smiled calmly, I understand a little bit, but Master Wang, you look a little nervous. Wang looked surprised, you actually know me. This is not a bit of understanding, so I won't talk nonsense. Master Ancient One wants to see you, come with me. The Ancient One wants to see me. Yes, of course you can refuse, we won't do anything to you. Guo Feng pondered for a while, then chuckled and said, why should I refuse? I also want to see the legendary Kama Taj. Then come with me. Wang reopened a space door, and Guo Feng followed him into it. In the blink of an eye, Guo Feng arrived inside Kama Taj, and the main hall in front of him was where the Ancient One was. Wang, who brought Guo Feng here, also completed his task and left alone. The one who received Guo Feng was Master Modu next to Ancient One. Master Modu took Guo Feng to a tea house and stood guard at the door, gesturing for Guo Feng to enter. The Ancient One mage is inside. Single quote. Guo Feng nodded and walked into the tea room. As soon as he entered, he saw the Ancient One mage sitting on the coffee table meditating. Sit down, the tea is ready. Single quote. Ancient One opened his eyes, stretched out his hand to signal Guo Feng to sit down, and then started making tea. Guo Feng sat opposite Ancient One and looked at Ancient One carefully. Facing the Supreme Mage Ancient One, Guo Feng must treat it carefully. After all, this guy is not a cat or a dog like Ivan Banki. The power contained in him is more like a god than a mage. At least so far, Guo Feng is not sure that he can get any advantage from Ancient One. Relax, Guo Feng, Karma Taj is not your enemy, and you are not our enemy. Ancient One seemed to see Guo Feng's thoughts, and said patiently, the power in you should be Dragon Ya, yeah, it's a very powerful force, even I can't see through it. Guo Feng took the tea from Ancient One and said, Master Ancient One, you invited me here not to observe my power. Ancient One nodded, destiny and the future are real. I have observed them countless times, but Guo Feng, your appearance has changed them a lot. Speaking of this, Ancient One looked a little helpless. From the moment you rescued Tony Stark and changed his destiny, the entire timeline became chaotic. Guo Feng was silent for a while, so Archmage Ancient One, are you planning to question me? No no no. The Ancient One shook his head, even if fate becomes chaotic, it is still the way it should be. The reason why I invited you to Kamataj is not to blame you, but to get rid of something from you. Want to hear the details? Ancient One didn't talk nonsense and told Guo Feng roughly about the invasion of the Dark Dimension and the successors. After speaking, Ancient One sighed. I don't have much time. If you don't want to do it, I won't force you. She continued, I can feel that in the future, you should be able to become a great being. Of course, I also hope that you will not fall into the darkness, which is a terrible nightmare for countless people. Guo Feng was thoughtful and then replied, I will consider what you said, and I would like to thank you for your kindness. Ancient One nodded and said nothing more. The next moment, the scene in front of Guo Feng changed from Ancient One's tea room to the Stark group's office. Space magic. It's such a useful thing. Guo Feng murmured, but it was a pity that he didn't have the opportunity to learn magic at Kama Taj. But he has frog cubs here, and maybe he can bring back this type of skill in the near future. Speaking of frog cubs, Guo Feng opened the game interface. When I went to Kamal Taj before, I received a letter from Frog Cub. This time Frog Cub sent back photos of the trip. Opening the photo, 
The background is a fairy-like hall, with a frog sitting on a stone, and above it are a dozen monks in robes riding flying swords. A world of cultivating immortals. Guo Feng murmured, looking at the background alone, he didn't know which world it was, but the resources in the world of cultivating immortals were very rich, and he was really looking forward to what the frog cubs could bring back when they returned. Turning off the game interface, Guo Feng began to meditate. On the other side, shield. Luodin came to a base, which was where the tesseract was researched. Take the exclusive elevator to the bottom of the base. It is an extremely grand laboratory where countless scientists and high-level agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are located. On the huge instrument located in the center of the laboratory, a Rubik's Cube filled with blue energy is located at the top. The Tesseract looked at with a stern look. Then, he summoned several responsible persons to inquire about the progress. Sorry, Director, we still can't figure out the Tesseract, and the progress is still the same. The scientist in charge said bitterly. Luo Dan motioned for them to leave, his expression lost in thought. Although he has summoned many talents from around the world to study Tesseract, only the top geniuses can find a breakthrough. Tony Stark is temporarily impossible, and Ivan Banko is dead. There is only one person he can use at the moment. Dr. Banner, he might be able to. Luodin remembered the person mentioned in a previous case, but that matter was taken over by General Ross. He was just following up on the investigation, but now he had no choice. In a slum in the Asan Kingdom, the residence where Dr. Banner died has been surrounded by General Ross's troops. On the armored jeep, Ross was holding a cigarette and looking at the tablet in his hand. The above is information about the battle between Iron Man and Ivan Banki. Although this information has been promulgated long ago, General Ross always takes the trouble to check it. This battle almost overturned his understanding of war. The firepower of a suit of armor can easily urge an army. General, we have been able to confirm the target's location. Do you want to take action immediately? After hearing what the adjutant said, General Ross did not reply immediately, but asked, Who do you think is stronger, our super soldier plan or the Stark Group's armor technology? General, I don't know who is stronger between the two, but I know that the super soldier program belongs to us. Ha ha ha, that's good. General Ross put away the tablet and said with a cold face, the super soldier project belongs to us. After I get all this, I will let Stark Group build an exclusive armor for us. We will be the strongest fighting force on earth. Act immediately and arrest Banner. Following General Ross's order, the surrounding troops began to take action, and fierce firepower directly focused on Dr. Banner's residence. The simple bungalow was instantly destroyed, and in the light of the fire, a burly green figure rushed out. Seeing Hulk appear, the firepower output around him became even more fierce. But no matter what kind of weapon, it can't harm Hulk, but it makes Hulk's anger continue to grow. A roar. Hulk began to counterattack, charging towards the army's defense line. In less than a few minutes, the first line of defense deployed by General Ross was torn apart by Hulk. Lifting up a Stark with one punch, Hulk looked at General Ross's location with angry eyes. General Ross looked at Hulk calmly. It's such a powerful force to make the soldiers stand back and use that thing. The next moment, several armored vehicles approached Hulk, but these armored vehicles were not equipped with cannons and machine guns, but rather special capture devices. Hulk continued to charge, and at the same time, the armored vehicle also launched the capture device. The flashing blue light of the power grid hits Hulk, and the extremely high-intensity electricity instantly paralyzes Hulk. Hulk stopped charging and struggled desperately. But then, more power grids came and paralyzed Hulk, almost making him unable to move. Finally it worked. General Ross smiled and waved his hand for specialized personnel to imprison Hulk. But when these people approached Hulk, the paralyzed Hulk was able to move, although the range of movement was not large. But at this time, General Ross's power grid was exhausted. Quick, control him. General Ross completely lost his composure, but Hulk's movements became wider and wider. With a roar, Hulk broke free from the control of the power grid, broke through General Ross's counterattack again, and then quickly left the scene. At this time, General Ross's troops suffered heavy losses and were unable to organize combat forces to continue chasing Hulk. In a certain corner of the scene, several S.H.I.E.L.D. agents were observing all this silently. 
After Hulk successfully escaped, they immediately reported the situation to the headquarters. Luodin received the news immediately and took action immediately. However, regarding Hulk's actions, Lu Dan had a trick and informed Tony Stark about it. The person responsible for communicating with Tony Stark is Natasha Romanoff. Knowing that Natasha Romanoff wanted to see him, Tony Stark, who had just come out of the studio, was a little confused. Confused, he immediately informed Guo Feng. Guo Feng, who was finishing his meditation, seemed a little surprised when he heard the news, but he did not let Tony Stark shut out Natasha Romanoff. When Guo Feng arrived, Natasha Romanoff, wearing a black tactical uniform, leaned against the wall with a serious face. You're finally here Jack, Miss Natasha Romanoff has some very tempting news to tell you. Tony Stark walked up to Guo Feng and said excitedly, Jack, you should know how lonely it feels to be invincible. The previous Ivan Banki was just like a child and couldn't make me feel the feeling of fighting at all. Quote. So S.H.I.E.L.D. is looking for you this time to help solve their problems. Guo Feng frowned. Tony Stark continued, you can say that, but Jack, my position has never changed, and what S.H.I.E.L.D. has asked me to do is indeed very challenging. Guo Feng couldn't help but become curious, what kind of trouble did S.H.I.E.L.D. have to find Tony Stark? Of course, if the Brazed Egg director wants to trick them, Guo Feng doesn't mind becoming S.H.I.E.L.D.'s trouble. It's a mutated guy. This guy is very dangerous, that's why we need Tony's help. Natasha Romanoff suddenly said, and handed Guo Feng a piece of information. After reading the information, Guo Feng looked a little complicated. The guy S.H.I.E.L.D. had to deal with this time turned out to be the Hulk. As for the description and introduction of the Hulk, Guo Feng didn't believe a word of it. There is no information about Dr. Banner at all, and the Hulk is completely portrayed as a monster that maliciously attacks the military. As expected of you, Fury. Guo Feng thought to himself, and he roughly guessed what Lu Dan wanted to do. Thinking of this, Guo Feng decided to intervene in this matter, and he also wanted to fight the Hulk. I will also participate in this matter. Natasha Romanoff smiled, that's great. With your help, I will be even more confident. But it's not free. I need some information in S.H.I.E.L.D. About alien technology. Guo Feng said without doubt. Natasha Romanoff's smile immediately froze. Seeing Natasha Romanoff's silence, Tony Stark's eyes lit up next to her. Alien technology. Miss Natasha Romanoff, the request Jack mentioned is also what I need. To be honest, I feel it is a bit exaggerated. Do aliens really exist? Guo Feng replied, of course it exists, and it's more complicated than you think. Mr. Tony, if Invincible is so lonely, it's better to put it aside. We will have many enemies in the future. Tony Stark rested his chin on his hand to ponder Guo Feng's words. After a while, the silent Natasha Romanoff finally spoke, I have no decision-making power regarding what you said. I will report this matter to the director. Guo Feng nodded, then report it quickly. By the way, tell Fury that we don't have much patience and we don't accept bargaining. Natasha Romanoff smiled bitterly, and then made braised eggs in front of the two of them. How's it going? Natasha Romanoff agent. Tony and Jack are willing to help us deal with the Hulk, but there is one requirement. The braised egg was very straightforward, that's really good news. As long as they are willing, there is no problem with not just one request but three requests. They want information on alien technology. There was silence on the other side of the communication for a few seconds, and then Luo Dan's disbelieving voice came out. What? Alien technology? How do they know this? Natasha Romanoff relayed Guo Feng's original words to Lu Dan. After listening, Lu Dan was silent for a while and said, tell them that I can give them information on alien technology, but only after imprisoning the Hulk. Quote. Luo Dan unexpectedly agreed, and Guo Feng didn't intend to delay it any longer. Where is the Hulk's location? In Mexico. Single quote. Natasha Romanoff showed the two of them Hulk's synchronized positioning. Then let's go. Purple flame clouds rose from Guo Feng's feet, wrapping him, Natasha Romanoff and others into the air. Mexico, in a small border town. The embarrassed Dr. Banner carefully came to a tavern and sat in the corner drinking alone. Why is this happening? Dr. Banner growled unwillingly. Some time ago, he was a world-renowned physical scientist, but because he was turned into a green monster by gamma rays, countless people hunted him. 
What Dr. Banner didn't know was that there were several S.H.I.E.L.D. agents following him when he entered the tavern. Confirmed target, Dr. Banner. After receiving the news, Lu Dan, who was far away at the S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters, immediately contacted Natasha Romanoff. Natasha Romanoff, discover the specific location of Dr. Banner, I will send a Quinjet to pick you up immediately. No need, Chief, we're already here. What? Lu Dan was confused. He suspected that Natasha Romanoff was joking with him. The distance from New York to Mexico is quite long. Even if a missile flies there, it will take some time. But how long will it take to get a reply from Guo Feng? I'm not kidding, Director. In fact, I don't know the process very well either. At the border of Mexico, Natasha Romanoff, with her hair a little messy, looked full of wonder. When she arrived here from New York, she felt as if she had traveled through time. Tony Stark looked at Natasha Romanoff with some empathy. Guo Feng's flying speed broke his cognition every time, making it impossible for the aircraft carrying the armor to follow and could only wait here for a while. In about 10 minutes, the aircraft arrived here and delivered the armor. This time Tony Stark still chooses the Anti-Wind series of armors, and they are the latest third-generation machines. In the eyes of Tony Stark, the Hulk is a low-end version of Guo Feng, and the performance of this armor is completely usable. However, it's not just S.H.I.E.L.D. that's looking for Dr. Banner. General Ross, who had failed before, also came, and this time he brought more sufficient military power and equipment. The shuddering sounds of tanks and armored vehicles resounded throughout the town, and General Ross quickly surrounded the place with his powerful troops. The arrival of the army caused almost everyone in the tavern to flee, except for Dr. Banner and several S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Are you General Ross's men? Dr. Banner turned his head and said coldly with a depressed face. Several S.H.I.E.L.D. agents hesitated, and the leading agent said, Dr. Banner, we are not General Ross's people, and we have no ill intentions towards you. As soon as he finished speaking, General Ross's special forces rushed into the tavern and surrounded Dr. Banner. Be honest, everyone, my bullets don't have eyes. Emil Bransky, the leader of this team, pointed his gun at Dr. Banner. Dr. Banner, come with me and let everything end here. Single quote. Follow you. I don't want to end up like a specimen, even if I die. Dr. Banner said angrily, and rushed towards Emil with a roar. Bang bang bang. All the soldiers, including Emil, instinctively focused their fire on Dr. Banner, and the powerful firepower instantly knocked down Dr. Banner. But Dr. Banner's wounds healed rapidly at a visible speed, and his body began to expand at the same time. Retreat. Emil roared. While retreating, he stared fiercely at Dr. Banner, who was about to fully transform. They have used many methods to hunt down Dr. Banner, but no matter what, Dr. Banner will transform into the Hulk as soon as he is stimulated. This kind of powerful power is what General Ross and Amir and other soldiers pursue. Roar. The safe Hulk let out a dull roar, looked back and forth, and locked onto the previous S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. In anger, he beat several people to death and rushed out of the tavern. The moment he saw the Hulk coming out, all the firepower poured down, but under this intensive firepower, let alone hurting the Hulk, it couldn't even be suppressed. At the same time, not far from the battlefield, Guo Feng and his party were watching all this. Is that someone from the military? Tony Stark frowned, and Natasha Romanoff, who was next to him, explained, the Hulk has always been the target of the military pursuit, but many pursuits were unsuccessful and caused heavy losses, so we, S.H.I.E.L.D., intervened. Guo Feng smiled and said nothing. He didn't know what S.H.I.E.L.D. was thinking. Then take action. Tony Stark couldn't bear to see the military's reinforcements finished, and they took off and rushed towards the battlefield. The Hulk was charging through the army's defense line. Suddenly, a red light fell in front of him from the sky. Bang! Tony Stark caught the Hulk's fist and stared at the Hulk with his faceplate flashing red. Big green guy, your enemy is me. Iron Man. Everyone present looked shocked. They didn't expect Iron Man to come. This guy can actually catch Hulk's fist. General Ross, who was watching the battle, was surprised. You must know that the Hulk's punch made even the main battle tanks look like paper in front of him, and Iron Man seemed to be very relaxed. Even the Hulk original was confused for a moment. He couldn't figure out how this strange little man in front of him could catch his fist. Roar. The Hulk roared and waved his fists one after another. Bang bang bang. 
Tony Stark took them all, and then the engine on his back started, pushing the Hulk back. Pour it for me. As the thrust of the armor suddenly increased, the Hulk was directly knocked away. The Hulk, who crashed through more than a dozen houses in a row, stood up in embarrassment, his anger making him stronger. Retreat from the battlefield. Seeing this situation, General Ross ordered the withdrawal of troops. It would be the best thing if Iron Man could catch the Hulk. As for whether Iron Man is willing. As a citizen of the United States, he cannot refuse the official commission. At this time, the Hulk rushed towards Tony Stark again. Tony Stark caught it on the spot and then threw it away again. This kind of crushing power made him excited. The Hulk, who was knocked away one after another, still rushed towards Tony Stark as always. And every setback will make him more angry and stronger. After more than a dozen duels, another collision finally made Tony Stark realize that something was wrong. He had expected the opponent's strong vitality and endurance, but why, with continuous consumption, not only did his strength not show a downward trend, but his strength increased a lot. Something's wrong. Once again repelling the Hulk, Tony Stark decided to make a quick decision. Jarvis, activate fire mode to suppress the target. Understood sir. Powerful firepower was launched from all parts of the armor, accurately covering the Hulk. Under the coverage of firepower, the Hulk was actually suppressed. This scene slapped General Ross hard in the face. What he and no one else could do was actually accomplished by Tony Stark alone. Is this Stark Group's technology? Witnessing all this with his own eyes, he couldn't help but feel a little shaken. Can a group of super soldiers based on the Hulk gene really take advantage of the Stark Group's technology? General Ross shook his head. This kind of comparison is meaningless. Of course, it is all for the best. Anyway, it will not be easy to get the technology from the Stark group when it comes to the genes of the Hulk. Boom boom boom. Under the short-term fire coverage, a big crater was blown out of the place where the Hulk was. Sir, the target's vitality has not decreased. Jarvis reminded. Tony Stark frowned, is it a mutant similar to Jack? Stop the fire mode first, turn on the battle mode and knock this big guy unconscious. In the blink of an eye, the shape of the armor changed, and its shape was very similar to the appearance of Guo Feng's dragon man. Guo Feng, who was watching the battle not far away, saw his expression change slightly. Aren't you going to help? Natasha Romanoff asked suddenly. It's not necessary for the time being. Mr. Tony can still handle it. After all, this is a armor made according to my template. Natasha Romanoff. At the same time, not far from this town, an expedition team was excavating in Indian ruins. Mr. Cheng Long, are you sure there are cultural relics here? Of course, I am professional in archaeology, said a young man wearing a brown vest. Suddenly, Cheng Long's cell phone rang. Dad, what's the matter? Cheng Long, Xiao Yu is missing. What? Cheng Long's expression changed and he said, didn't I tell you to take good care of her? How do you expect me, an old man, to live? By the way, there is one more thing. New York is not very peaceful recently. You should pay more attention to it. Dad said seriously, one more thing, bring some specialties to Dad when you come back. Besides, I know Daddy. After Cheng Long finished speaking, he hung up the phone and covered his head with a distressed expression. Uncle Long, you look a little troubled. Yeah, wait a minute, Xiao Yu. Cheng Long looked surprised, and when he heard the sound, he saw that Xiao Yu was right next to him. Aren't you in New York? Xiao Yu. Single quote. Xiao Yu spread her hands, Dad, I was a little bored so I came to see you. By the way, I saw something very interesting when I came here. Do you remember the Iron Man on the news some time ago? He was fighting a green giant. Single quote. Cheng Long covered his face, squatted down and said to Xiao Yu, of course I know Iron Man, and I admit that he is really cool, but Xiao Yu, you have to know that reality is not a novel, and there will be no green giant. Also, I will have someone take you back to New York. This is not a place for children. I know Uncle Long, but I really didn't lie. If you don't believe me, I can take you to see it. It's much more interesting than archaeology. Xiao Yu said seriously. Cheng Long shook his head helplessly, well, if I go with you, you can go back to New York honestly. He still regarded Xiao Yu's words as a joke. After all, children have rich imaginations. Okay Uncle Long. Single quote. 
Xiaoyu showed a successful smile. She was sure that Uncle Long had no archaeological thoughts when he got there. Cheng Long said goodbye to the team temporarily and drove a jeep with Xiaoyu to the small town. After a while, when the small town appeared in Cheng Long's sight, his expression changed. At this moment, a figure fell in front of the two cars. The impact of huge amounts was like an explosion. Cheng Long managed to avoid it without any danger. When the dust dispersed, a burly green giant came into view of Cheng Long. Look at the green giant, Uncle Long, I didn't lie to you. Xiao Yu said proudly with her hands on her hips. Cheng Long was in no mood to pay attention to Xiao Yu at this time. He was shocked by the Hulk. God knew the green giant really existed. At this time, even if someone told him that there was a demon, he would believe it. The Hulk looked at Cheng Long and others, and he was so angry that he directly attacked. Bang! With one punch, the jeep was directly smashed. Fortunately, Cheng Long reacted at the critical moment and jumped out of the car with Xiao Yu in his arms. Cheng Long put Xiao Yu down, looked at the Hulk walking towards him and said, Mr. Giant, we have no ill intentions towards you, please don't hurt us. What responded to him was the Hulk's raised fist. Seeing this, Cheng Long had no choice but to hug Xiao Yu and dodge. The successive attacks also made Cheng Long angry. He put down Xiao Yu and rushed towards the Hulk, starting with a flying kick. When he kicked the Hulk in the head, Cheng Long felt as if he had kicked a steel plate. It hurts, it hurts. Cheng Long shook his legs. Uncle Long, be careful, Xiao Yu shouted quickly, while Cheng Long, who had his back to the Hulk, also dodged at the critical moment. Next, the Hulk continued to attack, and Cheng Long had to hold Xiao Yu with one hand and escape. Tough luck, bad luck, bad luck. Boom. A missile fell on the Hulk, stopping him in his tracks. Tony Stark hovered in midair and looked down at the Hulk. His eyes glanced at Cheng Long and Xiao Yu with some surprise. He's an ordinary person. He's capable of dealing with the Hulk. Uncle Long, look, it's Iron Man. It's so cool. Xiao Yu gestured excitedly. Cheng Long also followed his gaze and looked over. He was also shocked by Iron Man. When he saw the news before, he only regarded it as a hype created by rich people who had nothing to do. No one with a bit of common sense believed in the so-called individual armor, but after witnessing Cheng Long in person this time, I realized that the news was not only not exaggerated, but also modest. Xiao Yu, let's leave here quickly. Let Iron Man deal with the green giant. Cheng Long warned Xiao Yu. Xiao Yu shook her head, Uncle Long, this is Iron Man. I don't want to miss this opportunity. At this time, Guo Feng rushed to the scene with Natasha Romanoff, and saw Cheng Long and Xiao Yu's group. The more he looked at it, the more familiar it became. Cheng Long, Xiao Yu, Guo Feng was surprised in his heart. He didn't expect to meet these two people in the Marvel Universe. So this means that Dad and those ancient demons may also exist, and his mood suddenly became complicated when he thought of this. The universe I am in seems to be unusual. Guo Feng did not contact Cheng Long and Xiao Yu immediately. After all, Natasha Romanoff was still around to avoid S.H.I.E.L.D. targeting them. But when talking about S.H.I.E.L.D., Guo Feng thought of District 13 in the adventures of Cheng Long and wondered if this department also existed. Roar. The Hulk's roar sounded. His anger seemed to have accumulated to a threshold and his strength changed qualitatively. In another duel with Tony Stark, he evened out his disadvantage. Tony Stark's smile froze immediately when he noticed the change. How long has passed but this big guy's strength has increased so much. The fight between the two sides came to a stalemate. I don't know if it was an illusion, but Tony Stark actually saw a cunning smile on the Hulk's face. Bang! The Hulk suddenly exerted his strength and actually forced Tony Stark back and then collided with him. Tony Stark flew away and happened to land next to Guo Feng. Hell, this guy keeps getting stronger like a bottomless pit. Tony Stark cursed and stood up, rushing towards the Hulk again. The two sides fought fiercely. At the critical moment, Tony Stark seized the opportunity to ride on the Hulk's neck, holding the head with one hand and aiming to hammer the head with the other hand. Get some sleep, you silly guy. The iron fists fell like a rainstorm, hitting around the Hulk's head. Under this attack, the Hulk's head suffered several injuries, but he did not become unconscious but became increasingly angry. Finally, with an angry roar, the Hulk grabbed Tony Stark with both hands and slammed him to the ground. 
Bang bang bang. There were several deep pits on the ground, and Tony Stark in the suit was a little confused. Then, he pointed his palms at the Hulk's head and fired energy bombs, using the shock wave to get rid of the Hulk's poisonous hands. Jack, it's your turn. Tony Stark shouted to Guo Feng. So far in the battle, he has almost reached his limit, and the Hulk is still getting stronger. Good. Guo Feng nodded calmly and ducked in front of the Hulk. The sudden change surprised Cheng Long and others who were watching the battle not far away. When did an extra person appear? Oh Uncle Long, I recognize him as the acting chairman of Stark Group. He is from the Dragon Kingdom just like us. But Xiao Yu, he actually appeared in front of the Green Giant. He was in danger after all. He didn't put on the armor. Cheng Long said worriedly. Xiao Yu supported her chin with her hand and chuckled. Maybe he is as good at Kung Fu as Uncle Long. For Guo Feng who appeared in front of him, the Hulk directly punched him. Guo Feng raised his hand to catch the punch. The Hulk's body immediately stopped, and his rough face looked at Guo Feng with a shocked expression. This understatement also shocked Cheng Long and Xiao Yu. Oh my god, Uncle Long, he actually caught the fist. Xiao Yu exclaimed, but Cheng Long was already dumbfounded. He understood that Iron Man could catch the Hulk's attack, after all, he was a creature of technology, but Guo Feng could catch the Hulk's fist by himself. Is it really like what Xiao Yu said, that he is a martial artist at the top of his game? At the same time, the Hulk's other fist also swung down, but this time Guo Feng did not receive it like before, but faced the blow head on. Huge amounts of impact caused the ground under Guo Feng's feet to collapse, and lifted the corners of his clothes. As for him, he didn't even retreat. Yes, it's heavier than I expected. To be honest, Guo Feng was also a little surprised by his performance. The Hulk's attack was like a massage to him. Of course, considering the setting of infinitely stronger anger, the Hulk's performance is far more than that simple. The Hulk understood Guo Feng's provocation, raised his fists and continued to attack. Good time. Guo Feng stopped being beaten and took the initiative to fight against the Hulk. Bang. The two sides collided immediately, and the Hulk was directly knocked away by Guo Feng. The next moment, Guo Feng appeared in front of the Hulk and grabbed his ankle without giving him a chance to stand up. Just like the Hulk did to Loki in the original book, he smashed it into the ground. And this scene was seen by General Ross and others who just arrived. They were so shocked that they even wondered if it was an illusion. A seemingly thin man can beat the Hulk so easily, shouldn't it be the other way around? After reacting, General Ross stared closely at Guo Feng. Anyone who has reached this point is undoubtedly a mutant. During this period, Guo Feng was still holding the Hulk and finally threw him away. The Hulk climbed up from the ground and shook his dizzy head. He did not rush towards Guo Feng immediately, but looked at Guo Feng with a fearful expression. Oh my god, isn't this guy an irrational monster? How could he show that expression? Tony Stark exclaimed. Guo Feng turned around and said, of course not. The actual Hulk is just like the Zhang Fei described by our Dragon Kingdom, who is rough and fine. The reason why he acts crazy is because the target is too weak. He is too lazy to think. Single quote. Tony Stark. He seemed to be the one who was too weak. Guo Feng looked at the Hulk again and chuckled. How about big man, if you still want to keep fighting, I can satisfy you. After all, I've just warmed up. Seeing the Hulk's hesitant expression, Guo Feng continued. If you are timid, let Dr. Banner come forward. I know you can do it, but in that case you will have to enter the laboratory. When he heard that he entered the laboratory, the hesitation on Hulk's face turned into anger. However, he did not rush towards Guo Feng, but towards the defense line deployed by General Ross. He still understood the principle of running away if he could not beat him. A few hundred meters away, Guo Feng ducked in front of the Hulk put one hand on the Hulk's face and pushed it down to the ground. Boom. The earth trembled, and the Hulk was embedded in the ground, surrounded by cracks that collapsed like spider webs. Seeing this scene, everyone present was shocked. Uncle Long, have you seen it? This is so cool. Xiao Yu pulled Cheng Long's clothes and pointed excitedly. Cheng Long looked flustered. No Xiao Yu, this is not cool at all. This place has become very dangerous and ordinary people like us are not suitable to stay here. But Uncle Long, even if we want to leave here, they won't let us. 
Xiaoyu muttered, and at some point several of General Ross's subordinates appeared around the two of them. Being pointed at a gun, Cheng Long raised his hands knowingly, but his face was not panicked at all. Director Black of District 13 is my friend. Let us get out of here. We will keep everything about this place confidential. However, several soldiers didn't care about this at all, but threatened the two men not to act rashly. And these words happened to be heard by Natasha Romanov. As a senior agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., she certainly knows about Area 13. However, she doesn't know much about District 13. She only knows that it belongs to the United Nations like S.H.I.E.L.D. There is no difference between the two in terms of authority. But there are differences in the areas they are mainly responsible for. Area 13 is mainly responsible for witchcraft and magic. Thinking of this, Natasha Romanov came to Cheng Long and knocked out several soldiers very simply. Seeing Natasha Romanov deal with several soldiers so freely, Xiaoyu's eyes lit up, this is what she yearns for. Madam, what do you want to do? Cheng Long put on a fighting stance and looked at Natasha Romanov warily. I just heard you say that Director Black of District 13 is your friend. That's right, so I advise you not to act rashly. Cheng Long's eyes became more alert. Natasha Romanov smiled and said, Okay, you can take this cute little girl out of here. After saying that, she turned and left. Cheng Long looked puzzled, and then wanted to pull Xiaoyu away from here. But when he lowered his head, Xiaoyu was no longer there. On the other side, after being hit hard by Guo Feng, the Hulk fell to the ground without moving for a while. Guo Feng had already let go of his hand and leaned down to look at the Hulk. Well done Jack, just leave the rest to us. General Ross stood in the car, holding a loudspeaker and shouting here, but he was not that excited. The Hulk was once the most perfect biological weapon he considered, but today that perfect giant was defeated by Guo Feng, who looked just like an ordinary person, with the purest power. Although he covets this power, General Ross currently does not have the courage to take Guo Feng's idea. It's not over yet, General Ross. Tell your people not to move. I won't be responsible if you accidentally die. After all, ordinary people are very fragile. Guo Feng said with his back to General Ross. Faced with his warning, General Ross hesitated. But the emir under General Ross stood up directly and said, Jack, don't forget that you are a citizen of the United States and are obliged to obey General Ross's orders. Now I order you to cooperate with us in capturing the Hulk. Emil, you idiot. General Ross's face changed greatly. Are you teaching me how to do things? Guo Feng turned around and looked at Emil. Yes, this is an official order from the United States. Emil said uprightly. General Ross, why couldn't this guy see the form clearly? He quickly yelled, Colonel Emil, how could you be so rude to Mr. Jack? Get out of here. But General, this is our only chance. Isn't our super soldier plan just for this moment? Emil was suddenly excited, but when he faced General Ross's cold eyes. Colonel Emil, what we are pursuing was defeated by Mr. Jack, and the initiative is in his hands. Single quote. Now as a major general, I order you to stand down. Then let the man from the Dragon Kingdom become our research object, and we can get him to cooperate. Don't forget, General, that the United States is behind us, and we have mushroom bombs. Emil's expression became crazy. He is more enthusiastic about the super soldier program than General Ross. Guo Feng watched all this silently. Emil's madness did not surprise him. After all, this guy was the predecessor of hate. After what Emil said, General Ross hesitated. Then he looked at Guo Feng and said, Mr. Jack, please cooperate with us in capturing the Hulk. Guo Feng showed a playful smile, then what? Do I still have to cooperate with you to study me afterwards? If you are willing to cooperate, I promise you that I will give you a generous reward afterwards. Please believe in the generous American officials. Leave this kind of talk to children. I will never agree to your conditions. Guo Feng's tone turned cold, from the moment I took over this battle, the initiative is all in my hands. If you want me to cooperate, you can. Use your strength to prove it. Bang. There was a gunshot, and a sniper not far away shot Guo Feng in the temple. The special bullets equipped with the anti-material sniper rifle can penetrate even the Hulk's skin. This is also one of the backups arranged by General Ross. If the Hulk cannot be captured alive, he will be killed. But now General Ross is left to Guo Feng. 
The moment he heard the gunfire, General Ross raised the corners of his mouth. Fake, you fools. Tony Stark, who came over, was immediately angry. He knew that Guo Feng would probably be fine, but he couldn't tolerate this kind of behavior of firing black guns at his friends. The special bullet successfully hit Guo Feng's temple. Not only did it fail to penetrate, it also deformed and collapsed. Seeing that Guo Feng was safe and sound, General Ross and others were dumbfounded. The power is pretty good. I haven't had a headache in a while. Guo Feng's face turned cold instantly. If you can't afford to take a cold shot, then there's nothing to talk about. Let's all die. Roar. The Hulk got up at this time and glared at Guo Feng, but then he showed a hesitant look. Instinct told him that Guo Feng's current state was very dangerous, so in order to avoid being beaten, he lay down again. It's impossible to be cowardly. This is called accumulating anger points so that you can turn defeat into victory at the critical moment. Jack, you can't attack us, we are official. Bullets can't kill you, but mushroom bombs. You have to consider the consequences clearly. General Ross said quickly. You are only allowed to shoot and I am not allowed to fight back. Are you kidding me? Guo Feng sneered. At the same time, the clear sky became dim. Within a few breaths, doomsday light thunderclouds had enveloped the sky. Everyone present looked shocked. It was the first time in their lives that they had seen such a terrifying thundercloud. The strong sense of oppression made it difficult for them to breathe. Jarvis, didn't you tell me that the weather here is sunny today? What's going on with this thundercloud? Tony Stark, who was hovering in midair, quickly landed. I'm sorry sir, this is not a natural occurrence. After my calculation, this thundercloud seems to come from Mr. Jack. Are you kidding me? Thunderclouds are from Jack, hell, that's outrageous. Tony Stark's expression suddenly became complicated, and the power shown by Guo Feng once again broke his concept. I'm not joking sir, there is a record in my database of the file you compiled. Mr. Jack said that he is an eastern dragon, and the eastern dragon's command of wind and rain is a talent in legend. Single quote. Facing Jarvis's popular science, Tony Stark was no longer in the mood to listen. Because just now, the thunderclouds in the sky showed a terrifying eye of the storm, striking down thunder and lightning like a waterfall. The location where the thunder and lightning fell happened to be where the sniper who attacked Guo Feng had ambush. It was a forest three kilometers away from Guo Feng, with a mountain next to it. After the sniper failed to shoot, he had already got into the car and evacuated, but the speed of evacuation could not be compared with that of thunder and lightning. Boom. The sea of thunder poured down, and in an instant a dazzling white light filled the sky, accompanied by a roar that destroyed the world. Even though they were far away, everyone except Guo Feng was affected. Ordinary people were shocked to death on the spot, and only a few survived. Even Tony Stark, who was in the suit, had a blurry head at this time, but he was quickly awakened by the auxiliary function. As the first person to wake up, he immediately looked in the direction of the thunder and lightning. Others were stunned. The forest and several connected mountains have completely disappeared, leaving only an abyss-like chasm, in which the remaining thunder and lightning can be vaguely seen. Tony Stark knew that it had become a restricted area. Moreover, he believed that this level of destruction was deliberately controlled by Guo Feng. The damage caused by lightning of that level just now would be much more terrifying than this. Hell, this is too outrageous. I believe it is divine punishment. Tony Stark exclaimed, the shock on his face has not faded yet. Also witnessing this scene soberly like him were Cheng Long, Xiao Yu, and the Lying Hulk. Uncle Long, have you seen it? Xiao Yu pulled Cheng Long's clothes, but Cheng Long, who was in shock, did not respond. Seeing that Cheng Long didn't establish himself, Xiao Yu said to herself, I just witnessed everything. This is so cool. Uncle Long, I want to worship him as my teacher. He must be the legendary immortal cultivator in our country. As for the Hulk, he is the closest to Guo Feng. He looked at the violent thunderclouds surging in the sky, and the anger he had accumulated before suddenly dissipated. Immediately, his body began to shrink and turned into a sleepy Dr. Banner. Anyway, he stopped playing with Guo Feng. Guo Feng glanced at the unconscious Dr. Banner, and then walked towards General Ross. Cough cough cough. After General Ross woke up, he immediately hid in the Stark next to him, hoping in his heart that Guo Feng would not think of him. 
even though he had experienced countless things, he was also frightened. Emil, why bother with this man? Guo Feng split the tank into two halves like tearing paper, and General Ross, who was hiding inside, suddenly became desperate. You can't kill me Jack. I am a major general of the United States. If you kill me, you are declaring war on the United States. Don't forget that the headquarters of your Stark group is in the United States. Guo Feng sneered, so far you are still threatening me, General Ross, let alone a major general, even if you are a general, nothing will happen to me if I kill you here. He continued, don't forget, you are just a loser. Bang bang bang. Amir held a rifle and shot Guo Feng in the head. While shooting, he shouted, you monster, go to hell. However, these bullets hovered less than a centimeter away from Guo Feng, then deformed and landed on the ground. Until the magazine was empty, Emil was still pulling the trigger. Under extreme fear and despair, he was only angry now. Oh, I almost forgot about you, Colonel Emil. Guo Feng glanced at Emil, and his Mangeku Sharingan opened. In an instant, Emil's eyes became empty, and then his expression turned to fear. He no longer paid attention to Emil Guo Feng, who was trapped in the illusion, but focused his attention on General Ross again. The corner of his mouth raised, don't worry, General, I won't kill you. Although I'm still very angry now, the value of your life is indeed greater. Hearing this, General Ross breathed a sigh of relief, thinking that Guo Feng had compromised. Who knows the next moment Guo Feng said, it's just that in the next time, you must live for me wholeheartedly and become one of my chess pieces. General Ross trembled inwardly, you want me to be your subordinate. No, it's a puppet. After speaking, Guo Feng used the Sharingan on General Ross, successfully changing General Ross's mind in the blink of an eye. Then he dispelled Emil's illusion and said with the other's fearful expression, Colonel Emil, are you willing to die here like this? You, you don't plan to kill me. Guo Feng shook his finger and said meaningfully, everyone who can live under my thunder has value. I prefer recycling waste, so tell me, do you want to become the second Hulk? The second Hulk. Emil whispered, and then his eyes became fiery. If you can help me, I am willing to serve you. Guo Feng nodded, I accept your allegiance to Colonel Emil, but I want to provide you with a layer of insurance. The next moment, he launched Sukuyomi against Emil. I will not control your will, but if you have anti-me thoughts, believe me, death will be generous to you. I understand sir. Emil lowered his head humbly. He could feel the power imprinted on himself, and a desperate fear surged into his heart at the slightest bad thought. Guo Feng pointed at General Ross, take him back with you. I think you should know how to explain what happened today. Emil helped General Ross up, I promise to satisfy you, but sir, what you promised me. Just wait until I notify you and let's go. At the same time, the violent thunderclouds covering the sky began to dissipate, and Guo Feng came to Tony Stark carrying the unconscious Dr. Banner with one hand. The matter has been resolved, we can go back. Ah, it's over. The visor of the armor opened, revealing Tony Stark's surprised face. He looked at Dr. Banner in Guo Feng's hand and then looked up at the sky. You know, Jack, I almost myself because of you just now. Guo Feng chuckled and joked, you are so old, how can you not be scared? Tony Stark. His tone was helpless, Jack, I originally wanted to ask you to help test the performance of the new generation of armor after this incident, but now it seems that I have to forget it. The previous plan has to be broken and restarted. Guo Feng patted him on the shoulder and said, you can come to me at any time if you need a test. Immediately, he brought Dr. Banner in front of him. Bring him back to the Stark group. Remember, no one who wants to hand this person over before I come back. I will make it clear to you about him later. Then Guo Feng glanced at the unconscious Natasha Romanoff in the distance and added another sentence. Take that woman back and keep it in your hands for the time being. Tony Stark hesitated, nodded, took Dr. Banner, put him and Natasha Romanoff on the aircraft and left. After Tony Stark left, Guo Feng looked at Cheng Long and his party not far away. Uncle Long, he's here. Xiao Yu pulled Cheng Long's clothes excitedly. Cheng Long's face suddenly became serious, and the next moment, Guo Feng appeared in front of them. Cheng Long was startled and pretended to be calm. Sir, we just have no intention of getting involved in this matter. I promise you that I will never tell others about today's events. 
Please don't embarrass us. Guo Feng smiled and said nothing, looking at the two of them up and down. This made Cheng Long a little confused. He carefully asked in Longguo dialect, Mr. Jack, for the sake of being from Longguo, can you let us go? Ordinary people like us are no threat to you. Quote. He pointed at the heavenly sting in the distance, look, if we dare to leak the news, you can strike us with lightning. Am I just a demon who likes to destroy in your eyes? And Mr. Cheng Long, I hope you can call me the custom of the Dragon Kingdom. By the way, my name is Guo Feng. Guo Feng chuckled. Cheng Long looked surprised, you actually know my name. Then he breathed a sigh of relief and smiled, sorry, I misunderstood you, Guo Feng, a very good name. Thank you, but Mr. Cheng Long, you and your niece can't leave here for the time being. I have something I need your help with. Cheng Long hesitated immediately, but Xiao Yu on the side said simply, No problem, we are happy to help you, but can you agree to my request? Xiao Yu. Cheng Long was about to scold him, but was interrupted by Guo Feng, a request. It doesn't hurt to talk about it. Can you allow me to become your disciple? Xiao Yu looked at Guo Feng with expectant eyes. Um. Guo Feng was surprised when he heard this. He didn't expect Xiao Yu's request to be like this. From the bottom of his heart, he was happy. After all, Xiao Yu's talent was outstanding, and in the original setting, he was the reincarnation of an ancient mage. Thinking of this, Guo Feng suddenly had an idea. He had an agreement with Master Ancient One before. Now that I have discovered the genius of Xiao Yu, can I go to Kamataj with Steve to inherit the mantle of Ancient One? After all, no one stipulates that there can only be one supreme mage, and besides magic, other skills can be taught by oneself. The more he thought about Guo Feng, the more he thought it was feasible, so he squatted down and patted Xiao Yu on the shoulder, yes, but as my disciple, you have to follow my arrangements. If you follow your uncle Long, I will change my mind. Quote. Xiao Yu cheered with joy and then promised, Master, I promise I will listen to you. Guo Feng laughed and said, you are a clever little guy, but calling me master is a bit cliche. Just call me teacher. Okay, teacher. Xiao Yu, who was full of joy, behaved very well, which made Cheng Long next to him look stupid. Is this still his naughty niece? She is so well behaved in front of outsiders. Guo Feng looked at Cheng Long and said, well, I won't talk nonsense anymore. I want you to take me to meet dad. You are looking for dad. Cheng Long said in surprise, Mr. Guo, let me ask, what do you want dad for? If it is to purchase antiques, I can do it for you, so don't bother him. Just take me to see my father. Don't worry, I won't embarrass him. Besides, as his nephew, you know too little about him. Guo Feng smiled mysteriously, he's not just good at kung fu. Okay, tell me the address. Cheng Long smiled helplessly and told Guo Feng the address of his father's antique shop. At the same time, he was also puzzled by Guo Feng's words. In his impression, isn't his father an old man with great kung fu? Could it be that he can also do magic? Oh. Dad's antique store is actually in Queens, New York. Guo Feng was a little surprised. He thought it was in San Francisco as before. Cheng Long explained, actually, my dad's antique shop used to be in San Francisco, but a while ago he suddenly said that he would move to New York. Today he told me that New York is not peaceful recently, and I don't know what his old man thinks. Quote. Then let's ask dad face to face. Okay, it's time for us to set off. Departure. But Mr. Guo, we don't have a vehicle to leave. Cheng Long looked confused. Guo Feng smiled calmly, no need for a vehicle. Believe me, we will reach dad's antique shop soon. After saying that, purple flame clouds rose into the sky, and under the shocked eyes of Cheng Long and Xiao Yu, they were swept up and flew into the sky with Guo Feng. Queens, New York. An old neighborhood, like many streets in Queens, is filled with gangs and various criminal gangs. But there is a shop that is very conspicuous here, an old antique shop in the style of Gulong country. The store door opened, and Dad walked out leisurely, with his hands behind his back. Several gang members near the entrance of the antique store showed fear for a moment when they saw Dad, and then greeted him humbly. They knew that Dad had been harassed by many people since he moved the antique shop here, but no one had a good ending. There were even whole gangs who came to trouble Dad. But facing hundreds of people, this thin-looking old man actually defeated them all with his bare hands. 
Go, go, don't stand in front of the store if you don't want to buy something, or do you want to cause trouble for me? Said the father, glaring. Don't dare, let's leave now. Dad did not look at the other people, but looked at the sky and murmured, Cheng Long, you have brought a big trouble to Dad. The purple flame cloud quickly fell in the alley next to Dad's antique shop, and then Guo Feng walked out with Cheng Long and Xiao Yu who looked shocked. Guo Feng's eyes were fixed on his father, and his advanced level of knowledge and domineering gave him a strong sixth sense. Although the old man looks like an ordinary old man in the original work, he feels similar to the previous ancient one. Is he an archmage of the same level as ancient one? It seems that in the universe he lives in, even his father has been strengthened at an epic level. Guo Feng thought to himself, and he could not determine his father's level. After all, dad's upper limit is very vague, and he is the kind who becomes stronger when strong. Dad, we are back. Cheng Long brought Xiao Yu to his father's side. Snap. Dad snapped his fingers and said to the snarling Cheng Long, Cheng Long, have you forgotten what dad said? I told you that New York is not peaceful recently. Not only did you come back, you also brought dad a problem. Quote. Xiao Yu interjected, but dad, teacher, he is not a trouble, he also saved us. Her expression suddenly became excited, and dad, we came back in a purple somersault cloud, which is much faster than a plane. In response to Xiao Yu, her father snapped his fingers, but he was much gentler. You actually still want to be your disciple. Xiao Yu, becoming a disciple is not a child's play. Oh my, it really gives dad a headache to see what your uncle and nephew are doing. Dad covered his head in distress, and then looked at Guo Feng with sharp eyes. You have been trying to find out about dad from the beginning. Do you want to fight with dad? Guo Feng's expression remained unchanged, but isn't Mr. Cheng also trying to find out my bottom? But I guess you didn't notice anything. Of course, if you want to stretch your old bones, I'll be with you at any time. Dad was silent for a while, then sighed. Forget it, you young people are more persistent, so I, an old guy, won't fight you. He turned around with his hands behind his back and said to Guo Feng, come into the store and talk. Although you are a trouble, you saved them both after all. Dad has repaid the favor for them. Guo Feng nodded and followed his father. As soon as he entered the store, his father asked Cheng Long to take Xiao Yu to do his homework. Seeing the two people leaving, Dad took out a hand and waved it gently, and a green magic door appeared. Dad walked in without saying a word, and Guo Feng hesitated for a while before following him. After entering the magic door, the scene changed instantly. Guo Feng found himself in a quaint tea house. Through the window, he could see a mist-shrouded mountain, like a legendary fairyland. While making tea, Dad said, in the words of our Dragon Kingdom, this is Dad's cave. Young man, Dad has noticed the aura of Kamataj in you. Have you been there? Guo Feng took the tea and asked, Mr. Cheng actually knows Kamataj, then you should know the Ancient One Archmage. Dad took a sip of tea and continued, you mean the Ancient One Archmage? Of course I know Dad. She was the first person Dad met when he was studying at Kamal Taj. She is a very good mentor. Quote. Guo Feng was surprised. He didn't expect to get such an answer after asking casually. The father continued, you have met the Archmage Ancient One, and you should know what Kamataj and the entire magic world have to face. The Archmage Ancient One has told me about this issue, but Cheng Long, I also have a question to ask you, that is, do those ancient demons really exist? Such is the Holy Lord. Dad looked surprised, it seems you know a lot of secrets, but I can't give you an accurate answer to this question. Demons are a taboo and it's best not to get involved. I understand. Guo Feng nodded, he already knew the answer from his father. One more thing. Dad said seriously, I don't disagree with you accepting Xiao Yu as your disciple, but she is still a child. Try not to let her get close to threats. One more thing, Xiao Yu's studies cannot be delayed. Guo Feng replied, I'll try my best. Cheng Long, you also know that the world will gradually become less peaceful. Some dangers are inevitable, and I have a proposal. Single quote. Then, he informed his father about the next supreme mage and asked Xiao Yu to inherit the mantle of the Ancient One. Even if Guo Feng wants to hide this kind of thing, his father will know it sooner or later, so it is better to discuss it in advance than to end it in the end. After hearing this, Dad fell into deep thought. 
Yes, but before that, dad will test Xiaoyu's talent. If it doesn't meet the standard, dad will choose to give up. Speaking of this, dad looked at Guo Feng with some complaints. Young man, you have brought Xiaoyu's fate forward a lot, but it is already a foregone conclusion, and dad will not stop it. After saying that, dad took out a squid tentacle from his arms and threw it to Guo Feng, this is dad's magic token. You can use it when you need dad's help. Just think of it as repayment for saving Cheng Long and the others this time. Favor. The next moment, dad summoned the magic door. It's time to go young man, don't come until daddy has tested Xiaoyu's talent. Sorry to trouble you, Mr. Cheng. Guo Feng walked towards the magic door very wisely. When the screen turned, he actually returned to the Stark group's office. Tony Stark, who had just entered the door, happened to see this scene and said in surprise, a green door. Jack, can you do this? Guo Feng did not answer, but asked, how are Dr. Banner and Natasha Romanoff doing? Talking about this, Tony Stark hesitated and said, Jack, I told you not to be angry. The guy named Banner is still here with us, but the female agent ran away. Run away. Yes, she actually woke up on the way, but I didn't take it seriously at first, but when I returned to Stark Group, I gave her a chance to run away. Guo Feng was not angry. It was not surprising to him that Natasha Romanoff ran away. After all, she is the first sister of the Marvel Universe. Although she is immortal, luck is on her side. Seeing that Guo Feng was not angry, Tony Stark asked, By the way, Jack, what did you do with those two people? You didn't kill them, right? Guo Feng, am I a murderer in your eyes? I took them home. Tony Stark breathed a sigh of relief, that's good, do you need me to do confidentiality work? A few million dollars is enough to handle it. Guo Feng shook his head, no need, let's stop this for now and tell me the location of Dr. Banner. Tony Stark and Guo Feng took the exclusive elevator and arrived at the basement of the Stark group. This was one of the strongholds established by Tony Stark after becoming Iron Man. After passing through the numerous access controls, the two came to a special detention room. In the center of the room was a hatch made of alloy, which held the comatose Dr. Banner. Countless weapons were waiting around the hatch. Tony Stark looked proud and said, I also installed a tactical nuclear bomb in that hatch, which will be automatically activated as long as the hatch is opened. Guo Feng. It was Natasha Romanoff's running away that caused you to behave like this. There's no need for that, Mr. Tony. Dr. Banner is not our enemy. Taking this opportunity, Guo Feng told Tony Stark about Dr. Banner. After hearing what happened to Dr. Banner, Tony Stark showed anger. Jack, you said that S.H.I.E.L.D. is a bunch of liars. I don't believe them anymore. But although Banner has gone through a miserable life, the guy named Hulk in his body is still too dangerous. Guo Feng smiled mysteriously, don't worry, just release him, Hulk won't appear, at least in front of me. Tony Stark was a little confused, but still ordered Jarvis to release Dr. Banner. Anyway, even if Hulk came out, he would not be Guo Feng's opponent, and maybe he could watch a good show of Hulk being beaten. The hatch opened and Guo Feng came to Dr. Banner. At the same time, Dr. Banner was also woken up. He looked around in confusion, and then his expression changed drastically. Is this a laboratory? I was captured by General Ross. Dr. Banner felt desperate and incredible at the same time. Although Hulk is not under his control, he has never failed to escape General Ross's pursuit. You look very panicked, Dr. Banner. Guo Feng leaned down and stared at him. Dr. Banner was startled, and then pretended to be calm. Don't touch me, you will be finished if I get emotional. Guo Feng couldn't help but smile. Let me see what happens when you get excited. Dr. Banner's expression froze on the spot and then he continued, I am serious. Once I get angry, it will be very scary. If you want to survive, let me go quickly. What if I don't? Dr. Banner sighed, I apologize in advance for hurting you. The next behavior is out of my control. If you want to regret it, go to hell to regret it. After saying that, Dr. Banner concentrated on thinking about the things that made him angry. For a few seconds, Dr. Banner's expression was indeed very angry, and his face even turned a little purple. Ha 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 ha. This constipated expression made Tony Stark couldn't help laughing. And just this laughter directly broke Dr. Banner's defense, and everyone else was dumbfounded. 
In the past, Hulk would appear whenever he was angry, but now there was no movement at all. What did you do to me? Dr. Banner asked in a desperate tone. Without Hulk's help, he would be completely useless. Guo Feng shook his head and smiled. Don't be too excited, Dr. Banner. I do have my reasons for Hulk not coming out, but it's not what you think. He's just sulking. Dr. Banner stood with despair, waiting for the fate of being studied next. Seeing Dr. Banner like this, Guo Feng stopped scaring him and said directly, We are not General Ross's people. Of course, you won't believe it even if we say it without proof. Just look at the news and you will know who we are. Quote. Guo Feng nodded to Tony Stark, and then handed a tablet to Dr. Banner. Dr. Banner hesitated for a while before opening it to check the news. After learning the identities of the two people, Dr. Banner breathed a sigh of relief. It turned out that he was not General Ross. Of course he knew the Stark group, an arms giant. But Tony Stark's deeds made Dr. Banner feel good about him. As for the Guo Feng in front of him, he couldn't figure it out at all. He just instinctively told him that this man was very dangerous. Guo Feng continued, Don't worry, Dr. Banner, we have no interest in the Hulk in your body. That is your power. He pointed to his head and said, What we value is your wisdom. You and Mr. Tony are both outstanding scientific research geniuses. There is a saying in our dragon country called Strong Alliance. I don't think you will refuse us. Although Guo Feng's tone was very polite, Dr. Banner knew that he had no right to refuse, but he was not disgusted with the result. He had already had enough of being on the run, and working in the Stark group might be a good start. On Tony Stark's side, news suddenly came from Jarvis. After understanding, his expression changed, he came to Guo Feng and said, Jack, the people from S.H.I.E.L.D. are here, and the leader is Director Nick Fury. He said with some regret, but I didn't meet Natasha Romanoff this time. What a pity. Guo Feng. He doesn't believe that Tony Stark wants to capture Natasha Romanoff to wash away his shame. Even if this guy is just a lustful person. Let's go and meet that brazed egg. By the way, Dr. Banner, you have to come with us. Ah. Dr. Banner was stunned for a moment, but followed him honestly. At the same time, at the door of Stark Group, Lu Dan, dressed in plain clothes, led two people in. On his left and right are Coulson and another senior agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., the famous Hawkeye Clinton. As for Natasha Romanoff, she has another, equally important mission. Let's go to the exclusive elevator. I think Tony should know that we are coming. When a group of people came to the exclusive elevator, the elevator door opened the next moment, and Tony Stark's voice came at the same time. If S.H.I.E.L.D. hadn't been related to my father, I think I would have planted a bomb in the elevator to teach you a lesson, you rude fellows. The corner of Lou Dan's mouth raised, that's really an honor, Tony. I'm very satisfied with your performance in Mexico. Now it's time to fulfill your promise. At the same time, he asked Clinton to enter the elevator to check whether there was really a bomb. Lou Dan believed that Tony Stark would not do this, but he could not guarantee whether Guo Feng would. After checking several times, Luodin and his party took the elevator to the top floor. As the elevator door opened, Lu Dan saw Guo Feng and his party. But his eyes quickly fell on Dr. Banner. Guo Feng didn't give Lu Dan a chance to speak. Fury, I know you are here for Dr. Banner, but I want to change our previous agreement. Dr. Banner was not handed over to S.H.I.E.L.D. After hearing the second half of the sentence, Luodin's smile froze on the spot, but he soon regained his composure. Guo Feng, you have to remember that Banner is officially wanted by the United States. How many big shots value his ability, and only we, S.H.I.E.L.D., can protect him. Guo Feng sneered and said disdainfully, it's just a nest of snakes and rats. Do you want Dr. Banner to go to S.H.I.E.L.D. so that Hulk's power can protect mankind? Don't be kidding. You want to use him to develop the Tesseract. Single quote. Luodin's face looked ugly, and the situation he least wanted to see happened. I thought that the deal with alien technology would allow Guo Feng to simply hand over Dr. Banner, but I didn't expect that in the end it would be because of the Tesseract. Lu Dan sighed, Guo Feng, you seem to be very concerned about the Tesseract. Let's each take a step back. You ask Tony and Banner to assist us, and I will bring the Tesseract to the Stark group. No need to do this, I will get it myself when I need it. Lu Dan had an angry look on his face, you have gone too far, Guo Feng. 
You must know that the United Nations is behind shield. Do you want to go against the interests of all mankind? Guo Feng's expression remained unchanged and he sneered. Don't put such a righteous label on me. The fate of mankind is not something you shield can decide. I can tell you straightforwardly that Tesseract is a trouble. The braised egg regained its kind face. You may be right, but sorry Guo Feng, we have no choice to give up. We have to go down this road. Now let's go back to that deal. Immediately afterwards, Coulson put the password box in his hand on the table. Here is information on alien technology. The technology contained in it is only superficial to us. I think it will be enough for Tony to study for a while. Tony Stark's eyes lit up. Although he was greedy, he didn't say a word. He believed that there must be other bargaining chips on the braised egg side, so he might as well let Guo Feng knock out more things. But the next scene surprised even Tony Stark. Guo Feng didn't negotiate according to common sense at all, but directly grabbed the lockbox, checked it aside, and then threw it to him. There are no traps inside. I'll leave the rest to you. Then he said to Lu Dan, the deal has been reached, you can leave. Are you kidding me? Clinton, who had been silent from beginning to end, finally couldn't bear it anymore, even though Luodin told him in advance that Guo Feng was a very dangerous person. Guo Feng glanced at him coldly. Didn't your director tell you that he just asked us to deal with the Hulk? What does it have to do with Dr. Banner? You shameless. Clinton glared at Guo Feng and instinctively took out his bow, but the moment he knocked the arrow, he was faced with Guo Feng's cold gaze. Clinton trembled all over. He felt as if the blood in his body had solidified and he could not move. Back off. Lu Dan quickly scolded that he did not want to conflict with Guo Feng Chi here. The strength of the two sides was not of the same dimension at all. But Guo Feng did not intend to let Clinton go so easily. With a scream, Clinton covered his eyes in pain. The pain was only short-lived, but his eyes were blind. Guo Feng said calmly, don't think about replacing eyes or anything else. Transplanting other eyes will lead to the same result. I have already given you a lesson. As for when to restore your vision, it depends on my mood. After hearing this, Lu Dan said angrily, that's enough Guo Feng, the alien technology and Dr. Banner can stay here, but you are too presumptuous to hurt the shield agent. Guo Feng was indifferent. Instead, he pointed at Luodin's other eye, if you still want to argue here, I don't mind losing your one eye. Lu Dan suppressed his anger and said, Guo Feng, you have won today's transaction. Dr. Banner will stay with your Stark group for the time being. After speaking, he took Coulson and others away. But when they walked to the elevator door, they didn't open it for a long time. Guo Feng's voice came from behind, sorry, this elevator can't take you down. If you want to leave, you can only take the stairs. Spiced corned egg. Taking a deep breath, Luodin still led people to take the stairs. Instead of walking up to the 100th floor in one breath, they called a helicopter to pick them up at the nearby window. After personally witnessing the helicopter flying away, Tony Stark's expression was a little complicated. Today's incident was considered to have broken his relationship with S.H.I.E.L.D. Jack, what is the Tesseract you are talking about? Is that what that guy Fury invited me to join S.H.I.E.L.D. for? Facing Tony Stark's question, Guo Feng replied, you can think of it as an alien creation, a treasure with powerful functions, but in fact, the Tesseract in its current state can carry coordinates. Tony Stark frowned, you mean once the Tesseract is activated, the coordinates of the Earth will be exposed. It's not just that simple, it should be said to open the door directly and let the aliens in. Then we must stop Fury. Tony Stark said anxiously. Although he is greedy for alien technology, he does not want aliens to come to Earth. Whoever can stuff coordinates into Tesseract is definitely not a good bird. Guo Feng shook his head, the activation of Tesseract will happen sooner or later, even without fury, but there is still a lot of time. Ignore Tesseract for now, Mr. Tony. The key is to improve your strength during this period. Single quote. You're right Jack, then I'll leave the rest of the matter to you. I'll take Banner to the laboratory. When Guo Feng was alone, he opened the game interface. There has been no other news from Wazai during this period. Guo Feng usually only harvests clovers and browses the items in the store when he is online in order to prepare for his next trip. 
But through previous travels, Guo Feng discovered that the longer the frog cub travels, the richer the specialties it seems to bring back, not to mention that this time it is a higher level immortal cultivation plane. At the same time, in a certain building in San Francisco, Wallen, who is wearing a green suit, led his men to the top floor of the building, passed through layers of access control, and finally came to a secret room with simple decoration. The secret room is wide and has no unnecessary debris, except for a circling dragon sculpture hanging on the rearmost wall. What is conspicuous on both sides is that there are 12 regular grooves on the dragon sculpture. When Wa Long walked in front of the dragon sculpture, the dead dragon sculpture suddenly had red eyes and made a hoarse and gloomy figure. Wa Long, is there any news about the talisman? Wa Long looked embarrassed. I'm really sorry. Holy Lord, although my black hand gang is trying their best to help you find it, there is still no news about the talisman. The Holy Lord suddenly became angry. You didn't find the talisman. Why don't you look for it quickly? Holy Lord, calm down. I also want to help you find help as soon as possible, but think about the expense of having so many people moving. Expenditure. The Holy Lord's tone became even more angry. I remember I gave you a treasure a few days ago. How long has it been since then? Balone, you are taking me for granted. Seeing the flames appearing in the Holy Lord's mouth, Walong said quickly, Of course I dare not fool you, Holy Lord, but my old rival Jinpin has often attacked my territory in recent times, causing relatively large damage. Seeing the flames extinguished, Walon breathed a sigh of relief and continued, And Holy Lord, my helping you find the talisman has attracted Jinpin's attention. Although he doesn't know what I am looking for specifically, it will definitely be possible to cause trouble in secret. Of. The Holy Master was silent for a while, and then said, Then call Jin Bin over, and you can go find the talisman together. Forehead. Wallen was confused. He only wanted to ask the Holy Master to increase money when he asked about Jin Bin. He never expected that the Holy Master actually wanted to ask Jin Bin to do things together. Putting aside the relationship between the two, the most important thing is the Golden Rooster King's treasure. He is not willing to share it with Jin. The Holy Lord could tell what Wulong was thinking at a glance and promised, Don't worry, the Golden Rooster King's treasure belongs to you, but I have to get the talisman before I can give it to you. After speaking, several ghostly ninjas carrying treasures came out of the shadows under the Holy Lord. The moment he saw the treasure, Wulong immediately smiled. Don't worry, Holy Master, I will definitely let Jinpin help you find the talisman. After leaving the Holy Lord's secret room, Malone sent someone to Hell's Kitchen to contact Kingpin. Jin Bing was also a little surprised when he learned that Malone wanted to see him. When he was young, he went to San Francisco to work hard, and Balan was one of his partners, but the two separated later because of some things. One founded the notorious Mafia Gang, and he took over Hell's Kitchen. After some thought, Jin Bin decided to contact Guo Feng. What's the matter? Kingpin. Jin Bin simply told Guo Feng about Wa Long. Oh. The loan from the Black Hand Gang. This is interesting. Single quote. Guo Feng was a little surprised. He didn't expect that Wa Long actually existed. Then the statue of the Holy Lord was probably also there, so this matter was worthy of his participation. Take me with you when you go to meet Wa Long. Just tell me when you get to the location. Kingpin hung up the phone and his expression became complicated. Until the afternoon, Kingpin arrived in San Francisco by helicopter, and the meeting place was a fishery on the pier. The two sides met with not many people. In addition to himself, Jin Bing also had Guo Feng, while Wulong brought the Lasu trio. Wa Long, who was holding a golden scepter, was sitting on a chair and stood up immediately when he saw Jin Bin and others entering the door. He said with a smile on his face, I haven't seen you for a long time, Jin Bin. I have been thinking about you all these years. After all, you were my best friend. Single quote. You are also Wa Long, but the two of us are busy people. If there is no big business, I will be angry. Jin Bing said coldly. Wa Long narrowed his eyes, but he didn't care about Guo Feng next to him from beginning to end. Then he snapped his fingers, and several figures carrying treasures appeared in the shadows. Seeing this scene, Kingpin's expression changed. Those dark shadows that looked like ninjas made him feel a little dangerous. Of course, he was soon attracted by those treasures. 
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support our channel.